All right, are we are we recording now, Anthony? We are. Uh, we got seventy five minutes on this, but if it goes overtime, we got fucking OBS open. So I, got I have no idea what you said. I, I, I don't. Oh. I said, I said, we got 75 minutes on this app, but if, if worse comes to worse, I have OBS open for contingencies. I was so. going to say, I too have IBS, but that's <laughs> two different things. <laughs> okay. That's how we get the front of the line and all the knots rides. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I tell people when I don't want to do anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Shoot the Shit Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony, and with me is my co-host for season three. I got Vincent, I got AJ, and today, our first guest for season three, because we've been, uh, I think we've been talking about getting guests for some time now, and, and now it's, it's, it's here. The first guest, he, you know him, you love him, he, he loves to party, he brings the party. Mr. Aaron Frame, how you doing? Good, gentlemen. Good to, good to be here. Good to be seen. Uh, you guys all look happy and healthy and I'm happy to see that and, uh, happy to be here and thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, this is, I mean, listen, you're no stranger to the channel. Everyone knows, everyone knows Aaron frame. Everyone knows how much we love Aaron frame and, and how much, you know, he loves the channel. So, I mean, it's just always good to have you on the channel. Yeah. I love being here. I've told you this before, man, but like coming Coming from like the YouTube world, uh, r really riding off of Wyatt's coattails. To be honest, that's all I did. I give him all the credit. But now, you know, you guys are probably the largest Halloween like channel platform on on YouTube. So I love Appreciate seeing that. that. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Appreciate that. You've earned it. Yeah. Hey, that's thank you very much. Days. It was Wyatt and and Aaron. I remember that. Fuck, I'm old. Oh shit. <laughs> Dude, I just turned 29 too, and I'm like, <laughs> you know all, right, all right, funny story. I, I just told uh, when I was on uh, Lucio's podcast, I told him the story, but I had no idea who like anyone from Scary Farm was. And like as a kid, like I I would watch like just Knott's videos or whatever. Right. One day I, I came across this channel called Knott's Scary Farm Rulers, and uh, I'm watching it and this and that. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever, like just kind of bouncing around like YouTube and I, I saw the interview when I think it was it was you and Wyatt like went to the rink and were like interviewing like I think AJ and, and AJ Bang was one of those people monsters and stuff. Right. Yes. And then like a year or two later, like I'm on like arts Snapchat or Instagram or whatever. And he's you know showing like Officer YY and, and fucking Aaron and Lucio. And like I'm I go back into my YouTube hole and I'm watching the video. And then I like I came across like Wyatt's goodbye video. And I'm like, hey, that kind of looks like Wyatt. And then, like, I'm watching, like, I'm just watching the video, watching the video. I'm like, I think that's Wyatt. <laughs> yep. uh, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. man, those are, those are good times. And, I, I mean, people like AJ, like, I give AJ a lot of credit. Thank you, AJ. I mean, they welcomed us with open arms into the rink. And uh, really, to be honest, taught us every – I mean, if I would have gone in to the Haunt Audition when I was 18 and fresh out of that minivan – if I would have uh -huh. gone into the haunt audition without going to the rink and meeting these guys, I'm pretty confident I probably wouldn't have gotten streets right off the bat. And I mean, they, they just by purely watching them interact or watching them do like uh, uh, practice auditions and things like that. Like it, it, I learned a great deal from people like, like you, AJ and, and, and the rest of the people at that rink. So I owe all my credit really to, to that. Those were my, those are my roots and my, my intro to the whole event. And really where I built the love for it um, in a lot of ways, too. Damn, oh, man. Nice. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I give flowers or flowers are due, man, and you certainly deserve them. And I still remember uh, – I, I remember vividly a photo. Uh, I believe it was in 2011, which I think was – was that the year you made Carnival? That was first year on streets, Carnival, yeah. Yeah, I remember oh, that being – What was it? Windseeker. Was it Windseeker that was in the back? Yes. It was like you, Wyatt. I think Wyatt's brother. Correct. Ah, uh, fuck. And it was a bunch of us clowns. Oh, my God. I do. I remember seeing. This yes. Picture. Great photo. One of my favorite photos. And uh, I think AJ yeah. threw the caption. He's like, some of the biggest haunt fans I know. And I remember seeing that. And I was like, oh, man, don't giddy about that. Like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> big haunt fan, dude. Um, but seeing everyone at that rink, because a lot of people at that rink uh, at the time were just like headstrong, ready to go to Carnival and very prepared for it. Very great talent, ready to do it. And they did. They brought it hard uh, it between. Like 
dude, so many of you guys went to Carnival. <laughs> I remember being at the rink and being like, I think I want Ghost Town. But like everyone <laughs> around me is like, Carnival. And at the time, that was like the young man's place. Like they went and tore that shit up. And um, it was so awesome to see that 2011 year going into Carnival and being like, I know you, 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 and you, and you, and everyone just mm-hmm. killing it. That's awesome. Thank you, Aaron. That's that, that, like it. It doesn't it doesn't hit me like as hard as I think it should be, or it should to know exactly how long I've known you, how long I've been working this event, like all the all like the memories and events and like core memories I have for this. Like just hearing you talk about back then coming up, all of us going to Carnival, it brought me all back to that point, and I I'm, I'm a little scared. <laughs> um, so just give me a minute or five but i'll be cool but like still like thank you that's it god it was it was cool seeing them because they were aaron and wyatt were like the first i i, I guess without without another definition uh, super fans they were the definitive like hey we really like this this event this event that happens only six weeks every year that's devoted to halloween we really like this event we love the mazes we love the talent we love the street talent we love the sliding we love all of this and they wanted to fucking create something out of that they were the first people i I saw to kind of do that with with youtube and with everything going on as far as like social media they utilized it and not to say i mean like honestly dude anthony without that type of momentum being built action there's not there's no saying like if you or any other of the, the the social media like you know haunt attraction outlets that we have here we're not sure if that would probably yeah but like not as soon as it did i think because they were these kids were making an impact with the actual talent that were there going in meeting them asking them questions they had really good questions they were really interested they were genuinely interested in everything that we did that because we were a part of this really rad thing that they loved so it was really cool seeing that and like i'm glad i got to be a part of it with with aaron and wyatt and it's just fucking rad so thank you (laughs) And it was so cool, man. Sometimes I'll come across those pictures or videos at the rink that Mr. Nelson would take or whatever. And I'm just like, man, this is like so crazy to see where everyone is and to see what they accomplished or what they're still accomplishing in terms of haunt. And uh, like it, it, I mean, it always, it, it brings me back. And, and, and also, you know, and I appreciate that AJ. Thank you for saying that. I, I want to give like super seeding credit to Wyatt. Cause I mean, really, and I'll say what uh, what Knotts as a as a company won't say, and because they probably can't. But Wyatt, I mean, Wyatt really pioneered the social media movement when it came to haunt. Yeah, and he deserves so much credit that he'll probably never like officially get, and he probably doesn't care. But he does deserve so much credit for bringing a lot of pub to haunt. And really, I mean, he was making those videos before, like, really before Knotts was even on youtube or maybe even on social media in a general way for haunt yeah it got their attention to do the whole like right you guys are so familiar with uh with Wyatt being kidnapped right from school yeah uh, all these other haunt monsters like he made enough noise to get their attention before they were even on there and so yeah i, I think it's safe to say that like yeah Wyatt definitely pushed the yeah. ball i know? i've 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 spoke actually it was funny i was speaking to Wyatt about this a couple nights ago um on uh when we were on that spot together and he was like man i wish in some weird quasi realm i had some sort of statistic that would allow me to see how much either people or revenue i personally brought to the event just through youtube you know i know he'll never get that statistic but he's just that's just something he's curious about like how many people did i turn on to come to that event to buy a ticket to show up you know um but i think he deserves a lot of credit for for uh for certainly what he did he's he's the he's the godfather of the haunt youtube but i mean prior to us i mean aj you remember monster space and shit like that's oh, god yeah <laughs> that was in hindsight probably very cringy oh um, yeah we all were dude it was it was where monsters meet.com essentially yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. like my space for, for monsters that was definitely a trip to see Long live, you know, like I for sure yeah, I really know that it's not not around, but probably for the better. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> probably for we the have better. we have Tinder now for it, so it's right, the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have uh, skate night. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I sent the sent everyone the the picture 
I believe Aaron's talking about uh, Anthony. That's, by, it in. by the way, that no, that's the that's gonna be the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. That's a great photo. Thumbnail. On my right is Aaron, and on my left is Wyatt. Beautiful. I think cool. Molly was in that photo too, if I recall. I think so. Yeah, Molly's right there. Maybe Five, Steven. Four. Steven Tubbs is right there. I yeah, think it's Wyatt's brother. I'm not sure who. I think that might be Evil Knight. I'm not sure. Was but... Kelly in that? No, because Kelly didn't do it streets that year. He got it the following. That's right. Um, but yeah, it was a trip. Yeah. And just like kind of, I, I scrolled far enough. Like there's pictures of me and Eric. There's pictures Are of. Are you guys by Western in this photo or what? No, we were by, right by the fountain. Oh. Yeah, in yeah, front of John Rockets. A, lot's, I a think. lot's fucking changed in that park since then, but. Man, those were the oh, days yeah. where Carnival had so, so like when I taught, like, uh, I was speaking to Lucio about this a while ago, but like when I talked like haunt nostalgia and like things that I personally like about the event. I've been so I've been going since 2000, so I've seen a lot of changes and I've seen a lot of stuff. And like to me, like two of the best years of that <laughs> event for me personally, like non working wise, was like 2004. I'm sorry, like 2009 or 2008 or nine Car and Evil when it was like Big John and Panhead and Pop mm-hmm. Up. Like, dude, yeah. that squad was fucking crazy, man. <laughs> like <laughs> they got to the World Series for sure. Yo, dude, those guys were like. <laughs> If there was ever two years where I would have been convinced to not do Ghost Town and do another zone, it would have been that year and 2011 Carnival when all you guys were there partying. Yep. Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that too. Because like, I was in a maze. I remember that I was in quarantine, I believe, 2008 and 2009. And both years, I remember working the front room and just seeing clowns going this way. <laughs> <laughs> and then some fucking bone guardians from CS going that way. Mm. And more clowns going this way the same clowns that went this way first going back this way like it was just <laughs> chaos. like back then it was not it was not scary farm halloween haunt yeah, it was not scary farm yeah um and it was under martial law and as long as you didn't get caught you were fine <laughs> right yeah it's crazy those are, no, those were the man those were the years that really like i i i set as my um like you the building the I'm sorry. You set the tone with it. Like that's, that's the type of tone that's, that's the right. Yeah. Those are like the building block, the foundations of like what I, in terms of like, whatever you want to call it, possible party or whatever. Like I would go those years, like AJ said, and I would see shit as a guest where I was like, Oh my God, like you're not going to see that maybe ever again. Like that's a one-time thing, special occasion. Like that guest as like me, that guest got to see that one thing. And that was so sweet. So when I, got to the point where i could work i was like dude every night i want to do something unique and different whether it's hiding in a trash can or you know spitting in their hair or whatever it is to give someone like (laughs) a unique experience that they can take back and be like you went to haunt i went to haunt too what did you see oh you just went through the mazes i saw some dude lick a person's shoe and throw it on the top of the candy store (laughs) you know like and they're like oh what we gotta go next year i gotta find that or you know whatever but what AJ is talking about those years are like definitely formative for me because I wanted to like recreate those one time things that you would come and see. I know AJ has been going for a while too. Like you remember seeing Jeff Starr doing crazy shit or him oh, yeah. and Dusty Geezer getting together and doing balloon animal costumes like, like Spaz running out in full Raider <laughs> yeah. on the city Anything Spaz yeah, does. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, dude. So <laughs> like. That's funny. Yeah, that, those are the things I try to recreate. And and uh, man, what a great time when Camp Snoopy was allowed to go to Fiesta Village and just run amok. It was fun seeing them out there. It was definitely like I wish they kind of kept it that way because CS is already just a small, yeah, small part of that park. Um, but they got creative. There was Carnopolis. Carnopolis was crazy. I wasn't able to be a part of that, but they that that Fiesta track clowns were able to go up to there. They'd have dance battles nightly. Yeah. Um, it got to the point where they would always meet up that they had track shoots made with, with Carnopolis in like Necrop kind of writing, but like with clown flair to it. Like the logo was so sick. The track suits were so fucking sick. Like <laughs> it was super huge in the camaraderie, I think, back then. Mm-hmm. Um, I think nowadays, not so much. Uh, but like back then, it was heavy heavily influenced it was your 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 street zone were your people uh they were your boys they were your girls they were like they were your dogs like you're out there there again like the martial law aspect of it um there was you know street justice was very heavily prominent in those years yep and it's just kind of cool because like i'm i get to i i know some people that were 
back then, you know, heavy hitters like Mike, Steve-O, uh, fucking, um, you guys had some warriors out there in Carnival, yeah. dude. Uh, even like, as far as like Wiggle, uh, Jessica, yeah, um, okay. yeah. she's a, a hurricane Jessica. Like she had this really cool character, really cute character, but like, nah, don't, don't fuck with her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kemion, uh, who was out there, uh. I can't, I can't fucking remember. I think oh, I'm so many people were out there that year. Sumo was still there that year. Sumo, Bear, uh, yep. and Dante, Dante. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Jason Casey oh, yeah. might have been out there. Yeah. Jason Casey was like the craziest too, because even during slider practice, uh, slider slider shows, he slid like no one else. He slid with <laughs> no hands, and he was able to jump like eight or nine people. Dude, the things yeah. him and Sivo did were fearless, dude. Oh, dude, they they because like I remember a couple daredevils, you know, that that someone's just go out and just fuck it, you know. That was like like, like, if this is it, this is it. (laughs) Steven was part of build one year, and he was going back in, and he took took part in making I think Ghost Town and the other zones had something similar, but for for uh, for Carnival it was like snack shacks, like movable, like uh, interactive snack things where we could hide in, we could pop out, we could move. Um, and he was just kind of chilling there, holding on to it. And he had, there was this like kind of prop cotton candy thing. And it was just, I'm not sure strategically or just coincidentally placed right where it shouldn't be. And these people came up and was like, Hey, you want some of my cotton candy? And he's just like stroking it. Like <laughs> there were very racy things where like, I remember yeah. running with Bubba and he had his, his megaphone mm-hmm. um, and we we're over by Supreme Scream. And he's like fidgeting with it. And he looks and he sees these, like these two women and they're wearing next to nothing long live um but he goes you're a whore and it cuts out and he's Incredible. like looking at it and the chick's just like excuse me and he's like hold on and he's like, horrible person and just <laughs> <laughs> Um, they were ruthless and like i i like to think we captured some of that but like i understand what aaron's saying here like back then it was just this like wild wild west type situation where like they gave us enough room to hang ourselves but they stopped paying attention yeah Um, that was the inmates run the asylum that was partly due to like oh i think partly due to uh and i'm 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 glad i kind of got in i feel like in the tail end of those years um I mean, I certainly feel like I did based off the things I got away with at least, but, or things I saw, <coughs> but also like that, now they're hiring cast leads who are like ex monsters and stuff. Back then it was just like rides people who got transferred into being cast leads. <laughs> and there's poor extra money. <laughs> and it was like, it's it's poor over. people, dude. They're like, what is going on? <laughs> like, no, this is totally allowed. I promise. I did it last year. <laughs> sometimes, okay. it's year, sometimes it's going to be the first and last year. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, no, those are, man, those are good years. You mentioned Carnopolis, man. Those were, I, I vividly remember seeing, um, and his name is escaping me. Oh, my God. He was a cast lead for the Tritsters one year. Shoop? Shoop. Shoop. Thank you, Greg. Yes. I vividly remember him with a megaphone sitting next to the swings ride. Yeah. And anytime the girl <laughs> operating the swings ride would be like, please don't swing your things in midair. He would just echo it. Stop swinging your damn chairs in midair. Listen to the lady, dude. We're going to kick you out of the park. Like, Throw me down candy. Like, it's just great yeah. stuff, dude. Like, Shoop and them, Mike Listenberry, fucking Josh. Yeah, who yeah. Is now one of our, like, head honchos. Mm-hmm. I've seen him do and say some things in CS that I am oh, not yeah. there, there for the protection of my <laughs> job. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Comments, like, oh, dude, it's like, like Pasta, Brandon, and Josh, and them. They, they were, they, they were there. Yeah, in the thick of it. <laughs> um, and it's, it's funny because you, I mean, these new people don't see it. I, obviously, of course, we all love what they do and we respect it. But like, you come from an era. At, at, from a monster standpoint and me from a fan standpoint where we saw those people do some crazy ass shit in Cam Snoopy, they probably wouldn't let fly now, but they had their fun. No, I mean, they're, I'm not, I don't want to say that they're lenient, but they're just like, Hey, I know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. Don't right. Do yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay. All right. I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they, they're, uh, they're, they're fair, but just mm-hmm. correct. Yeah. They're fair. Yeah. But just. They're really I was just happy. I was just very happy from a fan point of view because, mind you, this is how this is how Aaron and I were introduced. I was actually through Lucio. Um, he 
had had a, he had hit me up for do a podcast because we were doing Scratch Appreciation Month. So him and Wyatt and Lucille, we all met up at Lucille's house. We did the podcast. I think it was like a three hour podcast, wasn't it? We went yeah, through like it was a lot of four, fun. We did like four or five camera batteries, just went through them, dude. Just kept going. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, and yeah, I remember you were telling me all this stuff. You you know I would hear it and you know all that. And I was like, it's it's fun hearing it, but I want to see it. And and just my luck 21 happened to be your last year and i got to see it so i was like i got a taste of it it wasn't the complete like package but i'll take the i'll take the taste yeah I, yeah i definitely i mean i think i did okay but i i, I lost a step for sure from my 20 like 15 16 years but I mean that just that just happens when you're gone from it for so long, you know, zero practice. I only say I got a taste of it is because you're so damn fast that I the time that I did see it was like a little bit, and then when you were around me, I was like, okay, that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like to cat it. Or, uh, Gary said it best to me. He goes, you know, a lot of people like they describe themselves as like a monster, or like they describe themselves as a a, a character. I mean, I, we're monsters in my eyes. We're monsters, but uh, uh he's like, man. <laughs> he's like you know what you want to be you want to be a monster you don't want to be like a spook you want to be a you want to be a tornado and a tornado <laughs> is fast it's a blur it's chaos and like you can hear and see it coming a mile away you're not sneaking up on anybody and either they're getting out of your way or you're going through them <laughs> and i was like that's how i want to be <laughs> that's the type of monster i want to be Correct. um that's funny. <laughs> but uh no, it was, dude, it was so much fun coming back and being with people like AJ. I never, yeah, I didn't, yeah, like that was like seeing these people that came into Ghost Town and now made it like a reformed new version of Ghost Town is so cool to see. Vincent, too. Like, these are people that, like, I remember coming the year prior, well, I guess 20 and 2019, yeah. and like seeing these people and being like, dude, that's sick. Who is that? Like, Vincent, were you doing that same character in 2019? No, uh, yeah, he was I miserable. Was a random, <laughs> random person. 2019 I, I, the way that i describe like my knots career is like 2019 i was just kind of i was just kind of there like i was in ghost town just kind of just vibing and then 2020, player, I, was, right, so I know I, I know what i want to do yeah <laughs> well your character is amazing like both of you guys like very well developed characters like awesome Thank ideas I, I wish i wish i was like a portion creative is that like i have i don't have any creativity in my bones in that sense at all no, I mean, um, like, the, the party, Opossum Party is actually really fucking creative. Well, I, I mean, in terms of character. Oh. As a self-sufficient energy source for <laughs> yourself out there and for a lot of people. Because, like, I know how, like, there could be people that are like, oh, it's just it's just Aaron play, being a possum out there. But, like, no, like, I, I, I like hearing that type because I take that, in my mind, part of the build of a character. Because it's not necessarily just, like, one just scope there's so many different like alleyways and avenues you can do to a character so this possum's out there but he just wants to fucking party except you know maybe his party isn't the same definition as what you consider a party is his is chaos his is yeah. absolute just fucking oblivion you know whatever but you go out there and you're like fuck i want to do this you create an energy that like when i'm out there i'm like fuck there's aaron he's doing his thing all right i'm gonna go do my thing like it's infectious and like i think I, that's what you bring to the table i you appreciate that i i uh you know, it's, I I don't I don't like in terms of character wise, like I never, like my I st I just strived to like when I went into this thing, I just strived to be uh consistent and to be uh like to always have a rookie mentality, like always get better, always try to improve, always grow. Absolutely. And if I could be either of those two things, uh, and consistent being the being the priority of it, like if I could be out there and be like, okay, like I know that if we're down 15 talent tonight, like I know I'll be doing the same thing, zipping around the zone and doing what I need to do because people like you, AJ, you, you, know, you guys are doing what you need to do. And then the yeah. zone's still cohesive. But mm -hmm. in terms of like character, like it's funny when we, when we did scare school this year, um, cause I, I, I don't think I ever did a, maybe I did one scare school, but like, it's kind of a relatively new thing for streets. Yeah. And, they gave us those character sheets, and I'm like, I'm like, what do I do with this? I'm like, what is this? Like, okay, and, just like go out there and I do, I do that and this. And yeah. So, so they're like, write a brief character so we know what you are. And I'm like, dude, I don't even have a bad story to this. Like, they gave me the <laughs> possum character one year, and I just started doing my shit. So I literally wrote, "I'm a possum. I party." That's my character description. That's what I turned in. 
And I give it to Brandon and I'm like, this is what you can expect from me. And he's like, that's fine. But <laughs> fine. He's like, I'm aware of what you're going to do. Um, uh, There's like a lot of, a lot of the head honchos that have, they've seen us out there. There is a reason that like, they keep letting us come back. They, they know yeah. what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of cool, but like, I don't know, dude, like, I think, Maybe so not so much characteristics, but like you do you do supply us with some 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 real fucking groovy groovy times. Like, fucking like all right, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck did he do with the pizza box? All right, fuck, I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna see what the fuck my I can do with whatever the fuck I can find. Yeah, I mean that was just improvisation of just like what can be funny but scary. You know what can I? I don't know if you were with us, Vincent, when that girl. I, I you might have been. We had a couple. We walked backstage and found like four pizza boxes on the dumpster, and I was like, guys, let's take these. And, <laughs> man we got that girl on the ground she was having like an asthma attack screaming and we're all sitting on top of her like like, we're hot ready fucking (laughs) you know and like that's like she's screaming and her friends like snapchatting it or whatever and i'm like this is what it's about we're creating a memory whether it's a good or bad one we're creating a memory fucking ever and like really to be honest like the possum party was just like like the i mean the what it became was everyone else leading it and me being in the back and just watching it and being like, this is so sick that like all these people are running in a group, absolute chaos. You see guests getting out of the way when you see 15 fucking monsters running at you screaming. And they're like, what is going on? And now just, it got to the point where it was everyone else's party. I was just the possum. You know, I was sitting back there watching Caboose playing, playing bat and cleanup in the back going, man, this is so cool. All these, all these people who are way younger than me who will be doing this longer are, are up there partying and, and getting a taste of, the chaos and that that meant more to me than than anything when i came back this year like that was the coolest things for me to see that's rad yeah man now we're in the 50th year this year yeah <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah damn damn man so now that you've moved elsewhere like what's next for you like you, you, you've had this phenomenal haunt career, you know, you, you, you hung it up on your terms. What's next for Aaron Brain? Um, well, I, I mean, I'm here <laughs> for yeah. now, obviously, <laughs> uh, I'm finishing this degree. So I'll have that by December. Uh, you know, um, so that's great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Masters yeah, is nice. a tough thing to accomplish, but here we are. Yeah. Hey, um, bro. I got a master's in the custodial arts. So if you ever want one, come talk to me. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll, I would. I'll keep. Hey, I'll keep good. that in mind. It's good on the resume. I'm just saying. I need to do better at cleaning my house, so I might ask you for some <laughs> suggestions. Um, but I, I mean, I love it out here. I really enjoy it. Our house is great. We got like 16 acres. I got ponds and guns and, and ATVs and all the fun stuff. And I, you know, I'm spits throw from Nashville. It's a great time. Um, there's parts of California I very much miss. I miss surfing. I miss snowboarding. Um, <laughs> a great deal you know when you're landlocked you're kind of like yeah you miss it. but where's the mountains <laughs> right right um so you know it, it's it, it's gonna be hard to find a place that you think is necessarily perfect there's always gonna be something wrong with something um right. yeah. but uh once i finish up here um i've i've made it clear to some certain people that i i at some point in my life i have every intention of being a cast lead for ghost town um that would be something in my future i definitely want to do um i have several ideas i've spitballed with wyatt and some other people about things that i would like to bring to the table um and i i just you know i have a i have an affinity for that zone like i love ghost town a great deal i've been like a calico diehard for a long time and uh i would like to lead that zone at some point so that is my intention but after I get this degree, uh, I might be back in California for a year or so. So we'll see if that lines up. But uh, eventually, Montana or Wyoming is the is the game goal. Game. That's a senior game for you. Uh, you eventually, know. yeah, yeah. I want like a hundred acres and just to build a bar dominium and <laughs> build you your know. own haunt. Right? <laughs> yeah. <I don't> know <laughs> <we're in> Montana. <laughs> hundred <laughs> acres, yeah. own haunt. Come down. Yeah. It's not sketchy at all. Drive. Drive forty five minutes from a stoplight all the way into the backcountry to come to this event. What's this place called? Dodging bullets. I don't know. Let's go see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just up with the hillbillies, dude. 
<laughs> I'll do a bunch of local red nets. It'll be scary enough, I'm sure. <laughs> it's like a dark. Watch, you gotta watch Texas Chicks Chicks on Masco. You're good. Yeah. Right. Right. But yeah, Ghost Town cast lead at some point. Uh, you know, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to push anyone out. I want everyone to like finish their time. Uh, we've had Kyle for a couple of years. Kyle's a phenomenal cast lead. I amazing dude. I worked with him when he was a trick or treat when I was in paranormal. Supported me, helped me. Great guy. He's doing a great job with Ghost Town. Uh, whenever he decides that he wants to hang it up, uh, you know, I'll be in there at least for an interview. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about me. I'm going for Carnival, so we're good. Like, <laughs> Oh, you want Castle Carnival? I want Castle Carnival. Oh, you would be a great Castle Carnival. Holy that, shit, that would be man. terrific. I'm just gonna, that's all I'm going to do is just find you two all fuckers all night and See, just hang out with you guys. Just <laughs> I like hearing that shit, man. Because, like, it <laughs> fires me up. So, okay, I'm just nerding out for a second with AJ here. So, like... <laughs> I like you know how there's like two cast leads like per street zone technically yeah. like I don't know what kind of like money I have to throw to get Wyatt to be my co-cast lead for Ghost Town oh. or or Gary or Spaz one of the two um but I would love that but like you yeah. it, I would love to line it up to where you're a cast lead for for uh for Carnival because you would be great at that from each other yeah and like yeah. If if there's one thing people know about me is I'm like hyper competitive in a great way, like in a constructive way, like let's build each other up and get better yeah. and challenge each other. And I would love to do that with someone not only that I know loves that zone, but that I know, you know, that I'm that it's That's not like a sure. random person. Yeah, no, for sure. As long as it's as long as it's we, I'm getting the best out of you and your talent, and you're getting the best right. out of me and my talent. Absolutely, that's the only thing I would want. I I. I like I love Carnival. That was the first zone I got into. Is the first one I wanted. Like kind of how the same way you are with with Ghost Town. I would probably say it's the same reciprocated for me, but for for Clown Town. Mm-hmm. And um, I <laughs> got to be a part of it <clears throat> with twenty other of my friends, and we got to mold it into this like really fucking like punk rock, greasy looking, just like <laughs> yeah. really, we just looked like maniacs with clown masks on. And I think that was that was the pocket we needed to be in because that genuinely terrified people um and then it turned into kind of more theatrics more like haha comedy we are part of the carnival we went from carnies to attractions i guess uh but i would like to try and get something 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 else out of it maybe either the next evolution with a bit of everything here and there from the past but if i can get my clowns and you can wrangle up your your cowboys so that, that'd be fun that'd be really, yeah, really cool dude. that's what it's all about you know and i can i can hear I mean, you'd be a great castle across the board. I've told, I've told, uh, you know, during our after action reports during uh, when I was a cast lead. And granted, I only did it one year, so like I don't know shit about shit. But I just had that one year where I had a lot of fun, and I did, did it the way. Had a good rookie year as far as a cast lead goes. I appreciate it, you know. Yeah. I uh, and rookie I did year, it a very specific year. way. I, I, win, I did you guys win Maze of the Year that year? We did win Maze of the Year, <laughs> and I cheated the system in a lot of ways to to make that happen, but. <laughs> out anthony i just edit that out <laughs> i'm proud of what i did i've admitted to it now i told i told pasta afterward like hey this is what i did and this is how i got these people and this is how i kind of cheated to to put myself in a position to win and I, i'll explain that in a second because i'm not afraid of it um but in our after action <laughs> reports you know she was like well what kind of advice do you have like feedback blah blah, blah. and i was like you have so many great talent or cast leads like by all means, like that's phenomenal. But I would just say in the future, if you're considering hiring new cast leads, I would, I would veer on the side of people who have experience scaring and, and have worked this event because yeah. how as awesome as theater people are uh, or Disney people or people that have theater experience, which is great. I'm not discounting that, but there's a certain zest and a certain passion and experience that you get from when you're an ex talent that you can bring to the table to where you can side with those monsters. And it's less about, in some way, for me anyway, it was less about leading the show as a production and more about leading the monsters of how to scare. Because it's not scary farm. In, yeah. in my eye, this is how I yeah. led, right? So I was like, listen, in a maze, they're going to see you for two seconds. Like, would you yeah. rather, like, act? Or would you rather scare the shit out of that person for two seconds like you want to be here to do? So let's do that. You know? Um, but... Uh, so yeah, so someone like you, you know, I mean Josh too, right? He was Nets monster. He gets it. Oh, yeah. But like, look at where the zone is now, right? Like he's mm-hmm. elevated that. Um. So and when we had AJ, were you there for? You weren't there for a Dieterman year, were you? 
No, I came in Scott Dickerman of Nice. So not not Denise. Dieterman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Dieterman years were awesome because he was an ex monster. He got it. He understood, you know, what, you know, when I would get questioned by uh, the lead of, of fucking part custodial because they're like, he's <laughs> doing this and this, and you need to tell him to stop. He would come to me and be like, hey, man, I get what you're doing. I get where they're coming from. Yeah. How can we make it so we meet in the middle? And I would say, well, let's do this instead. And he's like, cool. I'm cool with that. I can defend you there. Sweet. You know, um, and I know you would bring that, AJ. I, yeah. I know you would bring those things because you want to party and have fun and you get what it's like to be a clown and the yeah. passion behind it. Um, you worked hard to get there. You were in the, you were waiting in lines outside of Western. Like you put the blood, sweat and tears in I up for 38 hours by the time I got home. <laughs> you go, see, <laughs> like, you know, um, oh, and, uh, I remember AJ being there. I want to say, I'm pretty sure you were there when I made ghost town mm -hmm. and yeah, man, what a moment. Like, uh, I'm, I'm recounting so these things. AJ, AJ was there for so many big moments. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I will say that I want to be, um, and this is my mentality, right? If you, if as not, and this is why I told my cast, if you're going to put a trophy in front of me, if you're going to say zone of the year, maze of the year, if that's a goal and that's a trophy, I'm going to coach this thing like a team so that yeah. we can win that shit. If you're gonna put a prize in front of me, I'm gonna work in front of my team. I'm gonna do what I can to put my team in a position to win so that they can celebrate and have that reward. Um, so I'm gonna turn to a coach if that's if you're gonna put a prize yeah. in front of me. So uh, you know, in terms of right now, you know, Goring 20s is kind of reigning supreme at that event in terms of I mean, like if, I, if fucking Calico had a live band every fucking hour, I'm pretty sure we'd win. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, bro! I could bring a guitar and an amp. It's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good, but I could do something. It's hey, noise. It's top, like Back to the Future Three on it. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're kind of reigning supreme, and like that that hurts me as a fan of Ghost Town to be like, oh, in my eyes, Ghost Town should be the number one every year. Not that, yeah. not that Goring Twenties is an absolutely phenomenal. They are <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. But that's just my competitive spirit of like, uh, if they're good, we can get good. Like, let's all get better, you know, because yeah. that will make the event better. All right, but, guys, I'll be right back real quick. I got to take care of my cast real quick. Give me about 10 minutes. Dude, take Please. care of them. We the ones. Um, I will say in terms of uh, how I cheated. Uh, um. This came full it's like it's like blackjack. You don't cheat. You You play the advantage. Right. Yeah. I had to put myself in a position to win. And if you're I didn't, not cards, you're an advantage player. Correct. Yeah. I'm not going to sit back and let it come to me. I don't believe in luck. Like I, I want to create my own luck. Easy there. Harvey Dent. <laughs> bro, you don't like, you don't like the ace of spades, bro. That card always gets you. No, anything, dude, you dude. I'm, I'm a king and that's the card I'm playing every time. Cause I want to rule my kingdom the way I want to. Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Honestly, on a wrestling, we're, on a, we're on a wrestling kick. I here. identify more as uh, Shawn Michaels. Oh, personally. the heartbreak kid himself. Uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, dude. That's a little my, sweet chin music. That, that should, you should have done that in, in Ghost Town. Like You should have hit Y with the sweet chin music just for a bit. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know and you could have got, yeah. got it loud with your fucking pads, too. <laughs> yeah, so like just, when you hit it, it's like, bam! It's like, oh, he just hit it with a sweet chin. Oh, it came incredible. out of nowhere and just started one, two, three in it. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. Yeah, I, in hindsight, these are things I wish I would have done. I wish we all would have gotten Ghost Town jerseys with our because we we identified with like the players on the the Last Dance Bulls team. That's like the theme every year. I gave our group a theme just to yeah. kind of give us a reason to be out there. And for mm -hmm. this one, it was the Last Dance. So in hindsight, we all should have gotten Ghost Town jerseys with the name of the player on the back and their number because that would have been sick. But I don't fucking think about it in the moment, but um, <laughs> uh, really quick, what I did, and essentially she was like, you're taking over paranormal. That's a hefty task. It's a great maze. I was like, dude, bring it on. And that I think we had something like uh, 55 spots in that maze. It was relatively large because we had a lot of stunt rolls, and the stunt rolls had to be on like 30-minute rotations. Right. Uh, so we had a couple different – uh, or a couple extra people. Anyway, um, I only rehired from the year prior. I only rehired maybe 35 people. 
So like a bulk of my maze was rookies, brand new, like bushy eyed, like ready to go. Um, or bright eyed, bushy tailed, ready to go, which is what I wanted. Cause I told pasta, I don't know if I can necessarily like, if I can manage a story, but I can control chaos. That's what I can do. And that maze is chaos. So, and it kind of speaks for itself as far as the story. Like, you have a lot he of said, repetitive. I, can, could, I love that. So, we need to get that on a shirt for you. I can control chaos. That's why, because I'm, I'm, that's me. That's my character. I know how yeah. to corral that and, and develop and a that. controlled environment and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, she's like, okay, like, this is your baby. Do what you want. But, you know, know that there's a surprise at the end of the season. And we got a lot of people who have been doing this for a while. And I was like, that's fine. So they all called me crazy for trying to hire like 30 brand new rookies. But I was like, this was me at one point. I know I can develop this. I know right. I can do it. So what I ended up doing was, was two things. And I hope that people don't steal my fucking idea. <laughs> Although maybe they did. I don't know. But the first thing I did was got with my friend who has a doctorate degree, PhD in sports psychology. And he currently works with uh, in tandem with the UCLA basketball team. Or at the time, let me he pause was. you. Let me pause you right there. Just because you know that person, no one's gonna fucking copy you. Trust me. I hope not. <laughs> so they don't have a person like that. So you already got the advantage. Well, continue. I, I, so, yeah. Well, I'll keep my notes <laughs> secret, I guess. But yes. but basically, I got I hit him up and I said, "Hey, man, can I buy you lunch? I have some questions to ask." Sure. So we got together and I laid out this is what I'm doing, and I would like to win this prize at the end of the year, and this is how. Uh, these are the things, the requirements that we're going to need to hit, the benchmarks that we're going to need to hit to, to get this prize. How do I get there? He said, cool. I'm going to write down all these things that you need to look for to identify leaders and followers and who it's all about them and who it's all about the team. And these, these markers that you can see through saying certain things to people or doing certain things to people um, to help you easily identify these things. And you have to decide how many of these new people you want to be leaders, how many you want to be followers based off the positions that they're in, so on and so forth. So I was like, cool. So I had a blueprint going into that thing, at the hiring event, how I wanted to do it. And so what I did was uh, for May's hire, they brought everybody in and they auditioned them and in like groups of five or whatever it is now. And you would get, Vincent, you might be able to speak to this. Uh, when you auditioned, did you get one of those little cards that told you like energy levels and stuff or was that just mazes no so we didn't my when i because i i auditioned your the, the same area that you were cast lead okay um we didn't get any of those cards they they i think only the the leads and stuff like the people the judges yeah got those cards because i didn't see that until like after oh you are correct yeah they they filled it out okay you're right you're right but uh but you remember that like that was yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. it was like it was like energy was you know on a scale of like one to two. it was correct. like energy vocalization yes. movements that's exactly correct so there was all these categories right and so what they would do was audition these people and then the uh the knots employees would gather that group of people that audition take the cards from the cast leads or, or from the people auditioning and walk them into the uh paperwork room where we were all the mazes were and they would put the, the cards on the table and we would go up and pit the cards out at random and call those people up and sign them up for the maze, essentially. So after about two or three rounds of that, I started identifying what they were doing. And I was like, you're just, it's luck of the draw. So I decided to go out to the maze uh, audition room. And when they, when the girl got the cards to walk them out of the room, I would just go up to her and be like, hey, like I'm a cast lead. I'll take the cards. I'll take them all over to the room. And she would be like, yeah, okay, whatever. And while I was walking them over, I would pick out all the fives, energy level fives, put them in my pocket, uh, pick out everyone that was like vocalization, five, four, cool, put them in my pocket because I can work with that, right? Movement, fives, cool, take a couple, put them in my – so every time I would take like two or three and put them in my pocket. And then I would call them up, and then at that point, like, we were supposed to sign them up for the maze based off like a, their height and stuff. I wouldn't do that. I would begin by asking the questions that my friend kind of laid out for me to ask to identify, you know, if I want you as a, uh, as one of our front room people, right? I want an energy and, and vocalization level four or five. And I want you to be a leader. You have to be loud voiced. 
You know, if I stand up to shake your hand, I'm looking for someone to shake my hand, look me in the eye, you know, I answer me directly with answers. And I would tell, ask him things like, you know, what makes you want to work here? Not for a job. Like what makes you want to work Halloween haunt? What's your experience with scary? What's your experience with this event? What does it mean to you? Um, and I would identify, and there was a lot of people I said no to who like, wouldn't, like didn't give, you know, wouldn't look me in the eye direct, things like that. Wouldn't answer questions directly with passion. And I, you know, I would pass them over to the next maze, but the squad that I have, like the squad that I eventually assembled were people who I handpicked. And my first night at scare school, I had them line up like face to face. So two lines and they were all facing each other. And uh, Brandon had him do some like monster exercises or whatever. And then before we went to the maze to take their spots for the first time and show them the maze, I said, hey, guys, uh, while you're facing each other, I want to let you guys know that no one is here by accident. I literally handpicked every single fucking one of you guys. I didn't fill a spot. You guys are all here because you're intended to be here. So I want you to look at the person across from you, and I want you to shake their hand, look them in the eyes, and say, you're going to be the best fucking monster in this maze. And they all did it. And I was like, cool. That's the tone we're setting. We're a family here. We're going to support each other. We're going to grow. We're going to be the best. There's a prize in front of us. I intend to win it. So you guys are a part of the team. There's no I in team. We're all together out here. So let's do your part. We'll all step up together, and we'll win this trophy at the end of the year. I don't care how many rookies we got. We're going to win this shit. Cue and fucking you guys Chicago are- Bulls opening theme song as they <laughs> yeah, come out right. of the tunnel. I was like, if you guys are with me, let's do it. If there's an issue, come talk to me. But – Man, the results spoke for themselves, and what was cool was by the end of the year, I had people coming up from, like, Pumpkin Eater, uh, Depths, one of the other mazes, and they were like, hey, is there any open spots in your maze I would love to transfer? And I'm like, we don't have any open spots, dude. Like, this is, the people that are here want to be here, you know? <laughs> and um, I give them a lot of credit because that night where we had, uh, like, the supposed like the, the terrifying night where we had like the supposed shooting in the park. Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terrifying. Right. Like, like who know what like, we don't have protocols for that at the time. Like, what do we do? You know? And, uh, kind of, okay. I got to say this. I just have to say that's kind of sad that a theme park, a theme park at that scale does not have. Well, now we do, there. but at yeah. the time I, there was no like formal thing on it. I think because part of the issue was that like they didn't know where the 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 gunshots were coming right. from. Yeah, you know exactly how that all transpired. By the way, wasn't it across the street? It, it was at the Seven Eleven. Perfect storm of like two or three things going off all at once. There was reports of shots fired by the Seven Eleven off Crescent, mm-hmm. but at that time, just for protocol, Buena Park PD needs to alert all major like attractions within the area of that so they got the call over the radio once they got the call alex holmes radioed that they had gate crashers yeah that's Um, what i heard walking through my maze i heard that on the code blue channel so somewhat somewhere amongst that whole thing they got gate crashers reports of shots fired in the park and then before anybody could could like actually rationalize anything, it went into a fury. Chaos. Of, yeah. Move, move, move. I remember seeing that shit. I saw I was looking at just this crowd of fucking people running up from A1 towards South. And I saw Lemus. Lemus was just like, go, go, go. I'm like, all right, fuck, fine, okay. And we left. We all got out of Southgate. That was like truly fucking terrifying. Like I, I saw a homie and, I, and they were like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, but we're fucking leaving. And I grabbed her and we just started running. Um, what was weird is everyone was running technically toward. Exactly. <laughs> where, where the we shots were. were. And yeah. luckily it was just the, the sound of a car backfiring. Mm-hmm. And 7-Eleven tenants thought like, oh, that there's, there's gunshots outside. Yeah. Oh, so we had a little Uncle Buck situation. Yeah. Correct. Dude, you know what's crazy is that I was, I was a squad leader uh, in Infected at that time. And we all like cleared the maze and we all went into the mystery lodge and we're all just kind of chilling there, hanging out. Then all of a sudden, like beep, way to park PD SWAT comes in, like guns drawn. They're like, what do you got? Like, cause like they thought that like, they were clearing the park and yeah. like, I think it took them like half an hour. They, cause we had like airsoft guns and mm-hmm. stuff, right? Like as part of like our 
costuming. costuming our props. And so they had to like clear each and everything to like, make sure that like it, it wasn't a real gun. And like, yeah, I think we, we went back out there and like, we had to leave everything in the backstage. Yeah. I, I, uh, going back to my point off that was like, I, so I didn't know what was happening. I walked out of my maze as I heard what Alex Holmes said. And mm-hmm. I heard Denise come over the radio and say, shots fired. So I was like, okay. I walked outside of my maze and Ken parts was standing there. And I was like, he was eating a Snickers bar, just standing there. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Ken. He's like, what's up, Aaron? How's your night going? And I was like, you want to do something about the radio call? <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, I'm indifferent. Are you on Are you on Blue Channel? And he's like, no, <laughs> let me switch over. He's like, I'm on the manager channel. And I was like, nothing's happening? He's like, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so he switches over. He hears it. He gets on the phone. He's like, give me a second. He gets on the phone. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, well... <laughs> We'll pause the maze. Why don't you get your people backstage, maybe for like 10 or 15 minutes just to be safe. Uh, but if there was something happening that we knew of in the park, we'd be opening this gate backstage and flooding guests out. Yeah. I was like, okay. So I went in, he stopped the maze, told everyone like, hey guys, like here's kind of what's happening. No one knows for sure. Just go ahead and get to the break room and play it safe. And um, I say all this to say, I mean, obviously – like terrifying, right? Like who wants to be in that situation? That's awful. Like it's scary and traumatizing. Like up until we find out it was, it was a false alarm. It was genuine. Like, right. And even after that, people probably had some PTSD from like oh, thinking yeah. it was happening. Oh yeah. For sure. Like, Oh my God. Right. So, and like, all right, cool. Sorry about that guys. All right, go out there. <laughs> right. You have to reset for a Saturday night, like a yeah. sold out Saturday. You know what I'm saying? So a true but, sold out Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. Have good days. <laughs> but I, I say all this to give my to give my talent props in terms of I remember going backstage to our break room and be like, hey, guys, um, everything's good. Everyone's like everything's fine. False alarms. We're all set. Uh, is everyone OK? Like, does anyone need medical attention? Is anyone like scared to go back? Like, like you let me know, like we can do this as a case by case issue. And literally all of my fucking talent was like, no, it's a Saturday night. Can we get back in this maze and start cracking this shit off? Every yeah. one of them. If I'm like, a go, man. I'm a go. <laughs> I was like, let's fucking go. And they're like, no, we got, let's get back in this shit. Saturday night just started. We have a line two hours long. Let's get this shit going. So that's just a testament to my, to my talent in that maze of how like, just, they were just absolutely fired up and they were coming up to me every night being like, Hey, you gotta, you gotta give us your nightly ghost town story about some whatever shit that happened. And <laughs> um, <laughs> The VIP, yeah, like they were always asking about that, and um, but it's iconic. Uh, the the VIP base, it's oh, iconic. Yeah. There's been so many awesome variations of that, whether it be a uh, whatever. I'm Carnival just saying the doing, concept the in Black general Hole. is iconic. We had it the is. void, in Carnival, the void, the void. Great stuff. Um, it works perfectly. And the v- I mean, I got the VIP maze from. Well, I, I Gary Gary bestowed it upon me when I was doing it with Gary, and we almost got fired in 2016 for it. Or 2015 for it <laughs> and i was glad to be able to do it this year i didn't think that, well they weren't gonna let me do it but uh, pasta was like i'm not gonna be there last night and you're not coming back anyway so See don't ya. hurt anybody <laughs> like, yeah, okay okay you, you remember uh it had to get shut down because it created like a fire hazard with how many people were lined up correct yeah <laughs> that's how i got in trouble God. in 2015 too and uh Man, that fucking VIP. Page what was, was the like, line? What was the line scale for your last one? Was it as bad as the the 2015 one? Dude, so like I was. I love the, the cat cameo. Aaron, you were in the back, right? Well, man, yeah, he's great. I was in the back. Yes. So looking out into Fog Alley, it was just people. Like you could not walk. <laughs> like it was Prince literally happy to hear, dude. He's like this. He's like, yeah. I was, I was, okay, so there wasn't like any room for me to like be in the area so i was sitting on top of the railing and there's that that little it's like a lamppost it's like hanging right right into the entrance by sad eye joe i was sitting on top of that railing and all you could see was just heads and it was just like fog up to like people's shoulders and then just like the tops of their heads poking through so i want i want to preface this by saying if anyone's listening and is a monster or wants to be a monster like don't break rules like i just have to say that yeah. Like, I think there's a balance between walking the end of the, like the ledge and not falling off. You can tell um, the line, no problem. There, there should be right. Yeah. Have fun, be yeah. reasonable. Um, push some limits, Have but fun, don't be no. stupid. Right. Um, don't do that, is what. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and if someone's like a super vet, 
if they're trying to do something crazy, maybe don't follow their lead right away if you're a rookie. Like maybe take a year to like make sure this is okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that year was like our it was our last night, and we had so many things we wanted to do. We did a lap around Ghost Town in our Bulls jerseys with cigars lit. Like we like we did all we wanted to do, and I was like, hey, I brought that neon sign, and I wrote like VIP experience on it because they didn't want me to call it a maze. And I was like, okay, I won't call it a maze. I wrote VIP experience. And it was like me, Vi, Lucio, Wyatt. And I think John and Carter uh, wanted to be a part of it too. So I was like, okay. I grabbed that shit at the end of the night and I went walking. It was the longest walk of all time going from where we had our bots to set up to the gate. Because fucking you're passing management and everything. <laughs> and uh, one of the TCs who I know passes by me. And she's like, what is that? It's a giant neon sign. And I was like, nothing. I'm throwing it away. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And by the time we get to the gate, uh, a cast lead, who's one of our good friends and kind of an original YouTuber, Nathan Hale. Um, oh. Yeah, good old Nucci94 from YouTube. Nucci94. Uh, rounded I love the, the numbers and stuff. I love them. <laughs> yeah. He rounded the corner and is like, like right where the gate is. He came out of because he was cast leading uh, Origins. Turned the corner right when we were there, and he's like, "Uh, I just got off the radio. They called you out by name to everybody. Aaron Frame is taking a VIP maze sign out into the park right now." And I was like, "I was like, okay, well, that tells me we can. We got five minutes." Yeah, you're so, like, "Good looking out. Thank you. Appreciate it." Right. So I was like, "What do you think?" He's like, "Go." And I was like, "Bet." <laughs> so we run out there, and okay, we had the, the uh, starts right there. Right. The clock was going, so I knew what we wanted to do. I was like, "Wyatt, Vi, you're gonna be up front." Screaming at people, Carter, John, uh, Vincent showed up too. He wanted to party. I was like, we ga gather the crowds, send them through in a reasonable rate, and I'll be in the back with Lucio. And I just had a trash can, and all I was going to do was pull out trash from the trash can and be like, here is like genuine, authentic, not scary farm <laughs> trash, like just for you. And Wyatt sent two people through, three people through, and I was like, cool, cool, this is this is working. And then Wyatt just unleashed the fucking floodgate, dude. Like 85, I didn't have any more trash left. I was like just in there, like just That's throwing it. Everyone. 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 Yeah, I was like the Oprah of trash. Like, you need a rapper, you need a rapper. Boom, boom, boom. And Wyatt comes back, and I was like, Why you tell me why? Do you want to call it? Is it getting too crazy? Like the line? He's like, dude, it's getting insane. And I was like, all right, cool, we'll call it. Let's do it. So we went back stage. As they were running backstage, I took a look out front, and there was a lot of people, but not the amount that I wanted to have. So we get <laughs> backstage, and I'm like, Wyatt, no one has shut us down. We're going back out there for round dose, dude. <laughs> so we run back out there and do it again, man. And then I think that's when Vincent saw the insanity. And my favorite photo of the entire year of Haunt is the photo of Vi holding up the VIP <laughs> experience sign and neon ring. That's so cool to me. And like West Coast or whoever taking a photo and being like, haven't seen one of these in a while. I was like, that's what it's all about, man. Like, that's the fun of it. Um, awesome. But yeah, those, those, uh, long live the VIP mazes in general, not just me, like all over the park. Yeah. Long live. The void was awesome. That was a great iteration well, yeah, of it. it was, like, it was when Perilous Plunge was out. And so on the yes. park, it said void. And so I think we had like a, fake cardboard void sign like may sign made and we were like we started at the chain link for the gate and we're like all right everyone just line up and then we'll, we'll take you inside uh this is an experience that isn't um promoted on uh anything halloween haunt related this is your own personal experience so everyone like we were hyping it up and we had all these clowns like scaring the guests in line like getting everyone like it was like midnight so we had like five minutes to midnight we start lining up people we and then it was like all right you guys ready all right five four Three and we have and they're chanting with us. Two, one, and we just leave. <laughs> Everyone's just standing there, like, what the they're fuck? Like, well, what, what is it? And we just, we just fucking not say anything. Just leave. We just run. <laughs> I mean, it did get to the point where, like, it was getting, it was merging with. I want to say, fucking not mesmer, the one before that, the, Bobo or, uh, yeah, uh, Bobo. The Black Magic. Black Magic. I believe it was Black Magic at the time. Um, it was like merging with that line. And so when it, that would happen, we just cut it early. We're like, all right, guys, just wait here. Someone will be, be by to take you in. And then we just leave. Um, so there was like two lines crossing over. And it just got into like this jumbled mess. Um, we didn't that was really get, sweet. 
into much trouble for it, but we did get talking to you like, guys, please stop. We're like, okay. So here's the cool thing <laughs> that you guys do that, that I didn't have the balls to do was I just did VIP maze Halloween night. You guys did the void a couple different times. Yes. Like you kept testing the waters. And I was like, that's, I wish I could do that multiple times. <laughs> uh, AJ, were you a part in 2012? Were you a part of the fucking uh, on earth show things? Yeah, and we just ran out and you started fucking crawling all over the fucking stage. Dude, I remember being like, you, you, and you, we're going. And then we, we were hanging out. I think Totem was there. Yeah. Like, fucking Derek trying to get across that stage and over everyone else was the most Dude, hilarious thing. That was so ill-planned. It was so fucking like, like, fuck it, we'll do it live. Like, we'll get there. And then when they say go, we'll just do, we'll fucking do something. Yeah. And the something was us just like falling over each other and maybe falling on some fucking guests and saying, oh shit, sorry, excuse me. And then just (laughs) running out. I remember, did you guys see the Unearthed show? Either of you two in 2012? I don't think I did. I don't remember. (laughs) So it was, dude, it was a fever dream of a one year thing that happened just one time. And it was in the mystery lodge. Uh, They were, they did a show. It was like a five minute show where it was like they unearthed the green witch or something and they had a cauldron yeah. on stage and everyone sat in the mystery lodge. And then when the show was over, the intention was they were going to open the doors where you guys used to stage for uh, infected. We were mm-hmm. just waiting there for a couple minutes and uh, ghost town was, it was pretty much just like anyone that wants to come. These are the times for the show. We need X amount of monsters. Some clowns came too. some CS people came. And when the show's over, we're going to open those doors and you guys just go running through the crowd and scare everyone out or run to the other end and go out the doors and the show's over. But AJ's right. Like, dude, to, to get through some, like, it, first off, it's dark as shit. And yes, we yeah. can't see anything, <laughs> see anything in there. We have steel-toed <laughs> shoes, caps on, we're hitting guests, stepping on feet. Face, like, knee pads and shit. <laughs> dude, I hit this kid in the face with a knee pad who was down <laughs> beneath his shoe. I'm just trying to go through those little tiny slats in between the benches. Yeah. Like, how the fuck did they, they didn't put any thought into this. And we're just like, you know what would be cool? <laughs> like, let's do that. And like, and I hear putting kids in a, con- in a concussion. I protocol. might have, dude. And like, <laughs> by the third week, I remember it was just like such a consistent, like the people that were showed up were like always pretty consistent that we just got to the point where we were like, what kind of bullshit? This is so unregulated. Like, what kind of bullshit can we do? There was one night where we had a, uh, like the doors opened and we just had Jesse the chicken standing there by himself just like looking around that was really good because the guests were like what the fuck just happened another night we did a condo line across the stage that was pretty good uh, but yeah like those the, like that was one of those things you know that one year it happened and like yeah. never again dude <laughs> but like, it was definitely like yeah, back in that era where it was just like anything's, anything could kind of, kind of go like yeah. uh, at the end of the night some people from Carnival, some people from Necrop would go up to the main gate. They get scared with everyone. Dude, I gotta send you a photo. I have a phenomenal picture of you and I scaring Ange. Let's and go. <laughs> yeah, it's a great photo. We have her up on the turnstile at the park entrance. Oh, like good. she's sitting up on it, like pointing at us to leave, and like you and I are both like underneath her. Um, <laughs> those are great oh, times. No, I think huh? I know what you're talking about. It's a good, it. dude. It's a good photo. Um. <laughs> Dude, you know what I miss? I, I saw it once in my life, and that was uh, – I, I happened to just be walking, and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I saw one mashup between Carnival and Ghost Town at the railroad tracks. Oh, those I was never a part fun. of those. Those, those sound those like Those were fun. cool. Those were fucking cool because it was like – I heard it from, um, from Matt. And uh, they would go up and fucking at like a certain time yeah. they'd meet each other and then just taunt each other. <laughs> or just try to make each other break or like do stupid shit just like I they're gonna insult fight. each other yeah i was like get off our pants dude, oh yeah <laughs> this is why i miss like carnival being up go, can go up to like right there because like shit like that could happen like i yeah. miss those railroad track interactions because it was like hey i'm on this zone you're on that zone all right fuck you i'm out <laughs> the restructure of knots in general is just so kind of weirdly foreign to me like i'm used to the calico stage being in ghost town i'm used to yeah. i'm used to carnival having you know, boomerang being there and having them have all that area to like yeah. run amok. Um, yeah. you know, it's it it I came back to Ghost Town in 2021 and I was like, this is like we didn't have Bigfoot, which we always had Bigfoot Rapids, and we always had uh Silver Bullet and we always had Gypsy Camp. And those three things were gone in 2021. Like I think earlier, but when I was there in 2021, I didn't have that. And I was like, this is I feel a little bit 
constrained <laughs> like i'm gonna run into walls <laughs> if i'm not but, mistaken at least from when i can remember i think like the last time i saw that there because i i had went in 2012 and then didn't go again till like 2018 whoa yeah it was a little bit of a period gap, That's gap. I yeah i was real. still i was That's like I was my still, whole hot career <laughs> i know i know and i and you know believe me i wish i could go back and change that now um i probably wish i could go back and start nice horse sooner too Mm. Um, but I just remember going in 2018 and being like, wait, where the fuck are people? There used to be people here. This is what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like it just, it was just so much changed within that time. I was like, wow. Okay. Like, like how you were saying, Aaron, it was just all, it was all new to you. It was all like, well, what the fuck? Like I'm used to this being there. We had this area. Now there's like just less, that. less, less yeah. shit, you know? And was, did you guys have a uh, wilderness when Dieterman was there? Yeah, there was nights, yeah. Thursdays and Sundays, they would shut down the borders, meaning Ghost Town was just like it was for us. Uh, yeah. And then on crowded nights, Fridays and Saturdays, he would say open borders, which means, like, not only did Ghost Town have Main Gate and the Cobra Roll, we also had Silver Bullet all the way up to the Western Trats, all the way up to the Maze Lines in Gypsy Camp. Yeah, dude, you could really open your leads up and put the miles on. Like, it was... You also got to remember, Aaron, that I was only an HHN fanboy up until a certain time. <laughs> And that's because, you know, I mean, it, it explains itself, IPs, all that shit. Sure. So and, wait, and, oh, sorry, and then it just, I just, I, I finally, as I started going to haunts, like I started going to HHN 2011 every year since then. And then I started going, I was like, oh, I want to see what Knott's has to offer. Like, you know, I liked what HHN had to offer. Let me see what Knott's has to offer again. It's been a while since I've been to Knott's. Went back to Knott's, liked it. And then it wasn't until like, after everything was said and done, I started Nights of Horror that in 2018 when i went i didn't cover it for the first year i just wanted to go back to see how it was mm -hmm. but i did i did remember doing like a review video on it and then in 2019 that's when sammy joined i was like we're gonna go to knots this year and not only are we gonna go to knots we're gonna get a season pass and not only we're we gonna get a season pass we're gonna be there probably like three or four times a week season really? passes were a great idea long live awesome i uh, i i 20 <laughs> 2021 was like a fever dream of a year for me too man i i don't even like I do that was because I got my possum in 2013 and I was like, dude, 2012 was like, I'm I'm glad Gary was there to kind of guide me because I came in very hot headed, very cockily, like in in a, in a lot of ways, just because I wanted to I wanted to prove myself as like the first YouTuber kid to like do this. Um, and luckily Gary kind of grabbed me and kind of taught me how to control the chaos a little bit more, and I, I I tried to let that go as the years progressed. But 2012, I was like. I was so excited to be to be there too, and that was like part of it. I was like, I was like, dude, I'm here, you know, like, and and I'm sure AJ, like uh, Vince, you probably both have those moments where like you out there and you're like, dude, like I'm here behind a mask, like what the fuck, like, nah, Vincent, surreal. Vincent, that was kind of 2021 for me because <laughs> after the 2020 year we had, mm -hmm. like working, I think I've I talked I've talked to Vincent about this for sure, but it felt like our 2021 season was something like it was like a level in a video game that we shouldn't have had ha access to, but we had like the cheat codes to access it. So we were able to fucking, you know, work it. It was just so odd um, at least for me, but it was just more surreal that like, I'm doing this again. Yeah. After the world almost fucking ended and right. I'm able to do this again. This is crazy. Like, Nah, dude, yeah. Vincent, Vincent misses infected, bro. That was his, that was his jam right there. Dude, inf infected was fun. No, you had Damn. Greg as a castle, did you not? <laughs> Greg was your castle, correct? Yeah, Greg was the castle. His first year was my first year yeah. as well. Fun, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys partied. He had, had a great do, time. So you got, yeah. you got to do. When was your first year, Vincent? It was 2000, 2018. So was Infected already at Mystery Lodge, or was it still in yes. CS? Yeah. So I think Infected was in its third. It was supposed to be its third and final year at Mystery Lodge, uh, and then. What ended up happening is that we, because Infected had a lot of like new people too. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we quite had as many as, as Paranormal, but like I know that I was like a first time squad leader, and I think there was like a couple other like first time squad leaders. Um, we ended up breaking like every record that of yeah. for in terms of throughput that yep. Infected had, and it was just like I think like the second or third weekend we like broke the record that had stood for like you know it's it's 
four, four or five years to that point. And then we're like, all right, cool. Like, this is awesome. And then the next night we broke it again. And then the next mm-hmm. night we broke it again. And it just like kept going up and up. And, and I think it got to the point where they were like, oh, this, this maze is still kind of popular. We, we might keep, <laughs> want to keep it around for another year. Dude, I remember going into the cast league meetings every night before we uh, started the night. And every night it was like, congratulations to Greg. You guys beat your cap capacity again tonight. <laughs> And he was very proud of that. He was working his ass off, you know, running around in that thing. And uh, I felt bad for you guys, man. We would get off. I would clear my maze on time. And they, here comes Greg on the radio. Yeah, (laughs) cast lead five to tower. Fucking, we still have probably 100 people in line. We're going to be here for another 30 minutes. I think the latest that I got out of there one time was like four in the morning on like a Saturday. Out of the maze or out out of the park? out of the park dude, so I, I was probably out of the main but like i was out of the stay maze. clocked in dude like yeah, sure. <laughs> right i think i think that we because not closed on two i think we had our longest line that we had was like an hour and a half at closing so we we got through the line at 3 30 and then we were like out of out of uh western by by 4 a.m that's ridiculous I, it was insane there was nights where paranormal have a two-hour line and it would be like half hour before closing and i'm like i would go up to all my live control and be like hey fucking pump and dump dude it's sergeant <laughs> time so we 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 got to that point at like we we had to start like pumping at like one o'clock it was like all right five feet go five yeah. feet go <laughs> and, and it was just like it was insane how like how fast we cleared it, but it was just like, dude, like, why are there so many people here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got to the point where I'm like, half these guests are going to watch the pre-show from the hallway. That's just how oh, it's yeah. going to be. <laughs> We're getting through this fucking maze. Because they're tired, too. It's like 2 a.m. They've been standing in line yeah. forever, and I'm like, let's yeah. just get them through this shit, you know? Uh, but the Adrenaline jumping one last time before they leave. Right. I mean, that was the intention. It was just like, yeah, let's just get them through this thing and. That last half hour was always most fun to me because everyone's got tired. And I'm like, hey, this is like the last win, the last win. That's what yeah. all my talent started saying. The last half hour of the night, they were just, that was like their battle cry to each other. This is the last win, the last win. Let's no, go. Dude, that was I'm just going to hear a chant. Dude, it was the last, the group, last group. One more group, guys. Yeah, just one more group, I promise. Just, just one more group. group. <laughs> you start hearing a chant throughout the maze, last win, last <laughs> win. They were last very inspired, win. man. Those guys were like, had like, team meetings on their own of just like the the, the <laughs> shadow demons would get together on their own and be like hey guys like uh because everyone had a talent spot but i like uh oh man uh you might remember aj who was the cast lead before me in paranormal the well-suited guy who was very properly uh, dressed I, byron? byron byron thank you byron byron, byron got the blueprint for the maze and hunted up in the back of the maze and made a uh, made a bunch of pegs in the different rooms. And what, what uh, he did was he would put the talent number and put it in the room. So you knew where, you, you know, where you were supposed to be and you would go up to that thing and flip it when you go on your break. So he knew who was on their break all the time. So what I did was I was like, okay, let's utilize this as saying, all my shadow demons, I'm going to write your name on the card and I'm going to put you in different rooms every night. That way you don't get bored. I'm going to switch it up. So before you come into the maze, look, see where you are for the night. And that's where you are. That way, we're always fresh. You're trying a different room every night. You're getting used to different things, different that surroundings. Keeps them that keeps them in. right. That's sick. I like and that. uh, yeah, my shadow demons would get together every night and be like, "Hey guys, like, we we're not we're not performing the way we should. Aaron's getting on our ass. Let's fucking." I was just very proud of those guys, man. I give them all the credit. Like they made me look good. Like I, I was very fortunate. But I want to cast right. Lee Ghost Town now because like, I want to I want to boss Vincent around. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, all there. It's like boomerang. It's all coming back to you. <laughs> um, oh, no, man. it's dude, It's so great. Honestly, I just want to take a second to say it's so great to see you guys um, and coming to the haunt last year and seeing it. Uh, big kudos to you guys, man. It was a great year. Um, I came on the last Saturday intentionally. I call that rehire night. Uh, <laughs> I, that's what I named that night because that's the night. Like that last Saturday, dude. You should be able to prove to everyone why you deserve to come back next year. Like yeah. that should be your pinnacle of everything you've developed that year. Oh yeah. So I call it rehire night, but I came on rehire night and you guys were just screaming through these crowds, doing a great fucking job. And uh, we, kept, we kept it alive for you. We kept the saloon saloon alive. Oh, we, we, yeah, we, 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 we know who's home. They know who's home. Know who's home. Yeah. 
<laughs> you gotta let daddy tell him no daddy's home Vincent, that's a, I still have your, uh, got I still your mail have the, got the, the mail. letter you gave me sitting there the mail. yeah got the mail Beautiful. um it was a great time uh see you with a glow stick in your mouth or in your nose and pizza box. <laughs> uh you guys were absolutely destroying it i genuinely enjoyed sitting there and just watching you guys do your thing i nerd out over you guys as a guest and like it makes me proud when i come and see ghost town and seeing you guys get screams and Absolutely demolishing it. AJ, I'm watching you over by Birdcage Theater. Fucking do your thing, dude. Like, moving, <laughs> like, moving, moving. Like, I get so stoked seeing that, you know? Thanks, uh, not that you don't do it anyway, but like, just yeah. me watching it just gets me fired up. Like, it makes me want to get out there. Feel faster. <laughs> right. That's fair. <laughs> Vincent, you're just, you know, being a crazy man, you know, adopting the traits, but, but working with your fucking six foot 10 stature and, <laughs> making it work you know and and uh great character too like it's 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 so cool to see man i nerd out as a guest coming just like i did in all the years before i worked and, um you guys just made me proud to be a ghost town alum honestly thank you, for real. Thank, you. thank you i really appreciate that I'm yeah not. i appreciate you guys <laughs> all i gotta do is pay money to show up you guys have to take all the time the blood the sweat and the tears to go out there and put on a fucking show whether it be in the more the, the the beginning or at the end of the night, you guys are still, you know, on the same yeah. caliber. And I mean, I I've I've put a science to it, especially when running with with Vincent because he's very <laughs> long, I'm very small, so he's also faster than me, so that I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I also I was working this past season with a hernia, so Ooh. that wasn't really fun. But we oh, we sounds- found a, a meeting point which is in Kmart, we just go find the, the, the darkest corner and we just yell obnoxious nonsense at people. <laughs> like, Is it the I spot mean, where they have the statue? By oh, the, yeah, the, the Indian is yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. right up in there. Just hug your, your little Indian there. And then yeah. it, it would be like, I, I would just scream and people would like, jolt. <laughs> Talk about the bench? Go, ah! Yeah. I think the Vincent the has bench. some really good ones over there. That's so cool, man. I love seeing that. I love hearing that. I... God, that fires me up. Like, Dude, it's, it's such an underrated spot right there. It's a great it spot. It's a fucking phenomenal spot. Vincent was on the Indian, and I saw the wheels <laughs> turning. I'm like, Vincent, don't. He's like, no, I can get up here. <laughs> <laughs> I can get up here. I'm like, Vincent, get down. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. That's, but it's like, it's like is... that, that's the, the type of energy that that you exude. I think Mike had actually mentioned it um, when he won for Monster last year. Uh, where it was, and you had mentioned it earlier, Aaron, like push boundaries. Yeah. And that yeah. is probably like a very gray area, but it's one thing that you need to have to be able to have fun at this job. Yeah. I mean, definitely. You be, you can become complacent very quickly. It's like, if you don't have a passion for this thing and oh, yeah. uh, man, I want to, in a, in an auxiliary sense, I want to bestow upon you, AJ, the most dedicated award for scaring with hernia all fucking <laughs> <laughs> that's well deserved that's beyond well deserved i there was there was like a couple times where we'd be running he's like that's it slow down <laughs> <laughs> because at one yeah. point i felt this warmth in my ass <laughs> like that's not good i don't oh, think no, that's, that's bad good that's the opposite of good so i'm like that's yeah it. slow down <laughs> there might be real blood he's like oh sorry <laughs> yeah leave a snail trail when you're sliding just, uh, uh, oh my god make, make sure you make slide smoother go faster yeah. <laughs> yes, like propelling. Uh, what was it jelly? Oh just, yeah, yeah. petroleum. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Just like, all right, just get down on my knees and just let it go. Just glide, baby. Yeah, I, 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 I that's that gets me stoked hearing that, guys. Honestly, it makes me like, uh, I re- when I retired in 2016, like I retired with a purpose. I know I didn't, I didn't intend to come back. Uh, even at 21, I hit a pasta and I was like, hey, I think I'm moving, Castle, and she's like. <laughs> yeah what's your schedule so i told her my word schedule and she's like yeah Monster? i was like no i was like no worries dude like it's no big deal and she was like do you want to come back and scare and i was like hmm maybe <laughs> and why and why and all them come back and she was like sure and i was like okay so what's that. funny is she told me auditions are gonna be videos and i was like <laughs> okay yeah me, Vi, Vi, and Wyatt went to a park and made legit ass audition tape videos, and like the first t- like ten minutes of the video were me going, 
hi, I'm Aaron Frame. I'm I'm six foot five. I can run a 40 yard dash in 15 seconds, blah, blah, blah. Like, give me all these stats about me. There were fucking funny videos. And I sent them to Pasta. And she, I was like, here's our audition tapes. And she's like, these are amazing. And I love these, but we're going to send you a link to record a video. And I was like, Please uh, tell me okay. you'll have them. Oh, yeah, I got them, dude. They're, you need yeah, to send them to me because they might go at the end of this video. You haven't seen them? I thought I showed them to you at some point, dude. Did, looking, I don't think you did. Why you edited them? Like they're, they're fucking. <laughs> that they're may funny, need to dude. go. That may need to go at the end of this video. <laughs> they're they're cringy but very entertaining. Are they like um, like the NFL like intros, just like Aaron Frame Calico that's, Ghost? That's Pro? what it was. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> he, like paused the screen. It was a bunch of stats. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, like I five like the, foot nine on a good day. Like I know. love the fucking memes of like when someone gets knocked out by like a fucking inanimate object, and then the fucking object goes stop sign, <laughs> old miss, <laughs> linebacker. Yeah, yeah D line, old miss, <laughs> six five. Yes, no yeah, that, that was hilarious, and and I'm glad uh, we have those because that's a great memory now. But um, I didn't I didn't intend to come back and scare until she brought that up. And I was like, fuck it. Let's go back to the last dance. And luckily they all came back with me, but I, man, like, I, I think my career in scaring is mostly done, but when I see you guys doing what you do out there, dude, it like, it makes me think I have more gas in my tank, whether I do or not, I'm not sure, but it, it makes me at least believe it. And have you seen this man's structure. This guy looks like the captain America of haunt. <laughs> Who, who are you talking about, Vince? I'm talking about you. Oh, no, I don't You're look like you. <laughs> Come on, Chris you Evans. No, dude. No, no you're, just, the real definition. Ch- you're the real definition of America. I don't have a chiseled jawline like that beautiful man, dude. <laughs> I don't squat like he does. You got the, you the, got the, you got the nice like Tony Stark thing going on here. So Yeah, this will come and go depending on how cold or hot it gets out here. Um, <laughs> the Bass Pro right. Shop says America. It, may- <laughs> I'm just saying. it makes me think I have more in the tank. Uh, whether or not I do, I don't know. But it inspires me, and I know if it inspires me, it inspires a lot of other people. So, um, I, know, th- I, I think, like, for, for me, I try and, like, emulate you in that sense because, like... The- don't copy it- me, dude. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you're better than me dude you're better than me <laughs> i meant i meant like in terms of like like giving that energy to like like push people right where it's like oh, yeah that like that like that energy is infectious where it's like oh dude that guy's doing something awesome i want to do something awesome too and then like just kind of all right i did something awesome you did something awesome i did something awesome or you did something even more awesome and then just like yeah. elevating well that was our like i said i get that mentality from just being sports my whole life but also spaz too like i it's it's a it's an amalgam of different um inspirations there but uh yeah i mean uh, if you if you ever are on streets and you are running with me vi uh me lucio it's me wyatt especially me and wyatt man when we're on streets running together we're like bickering in a friendly way to, to push each other you know why there's countless times where Wyatt's told me like, Hey man, that slide was kind of shitty. I'm not going to front with you. Cool. <laughs> Fucking bet. Watch this next one, you know? And, uh, we're not, he's not saying it in a mean way. We don't, you know, say it like that. We're teammates, right? Like we're keep like, ourselves let's, together accountable. Right. Absolutely. Like the only way to get better is to get better. Like iron sharpens iron here. So, uh, if we want to be the best, we got to, and he's copying me that things that were good. I'm copying him. That daddy's home thing is Wyatt. Like that's why oh, wow. I just jumped on board with that. Cause I was like, that is sick. And why it's like, let's do it. You know? Um, but like you steal things from other people in, in small nuanced ways to, to develop. But like yeah. you're saying, Vincent, like challenge each other to, to, to get better. Um, Lucio fucking, when we were running together, this motherfucker is fast in, in like in, in bursts and he can like, just boom, be somewhere. You right? literally like you'll blink and he'll be right next to you and then he'll be at the end of fog alley yes he's i'm convinced lucio has an incredible 40 yard dash time you know <laughs> the longevity of it he'll admit you know i don't know if i can sustain it like maybe me or spaz or whatever but man when he goes i don't know of anyone that can catch him off top maybe guru when guru was there yeah. but like that's it and this motherfucker we'd scare together and he would like run and get in front of me to cut me off for scares to challenge me go faster and that was me that was him telling me hey like you're supposed to be the fast one like let's go and i would jump in front of him and that's just how we competed in a friendly way um just to 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 get to get better and that 
boil down to the to the rookie hat thing us getting rookie hats every year um i i still don't think i own a veteran hat or if i did i'd give it away to a fan or something like that um you gave it to me you gave two to me. You have it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I give it to people that way. Like, I was know, like, oh. I'm never going to wear this, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, you you will appreciate it more than me in that moment. I appreciate I have, like, seven rookie hats. It's and funny I that you brought them up because I fucking literally was cleaning my couch today, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to interview Aaron today. <laughs> and I'm holding the hats. <laughs> I, I have all my rookie hats, and I've had the year written on them all. And then on all of them, I have the – because I wear a pedometer every year. Uh, except for 2012, uh, 2013 on, I wore a pedometer and every year I clock my total miles for the year and I write it on the hat. So I write the year Ooh. and the total miles of that. It's like a marathon kind of thing. I, I mean, that's just, that's just me in my own head of like how many miles do I fucking run? But, <laughs> uh, and cause I want to beat Gary cause Gary did that every year too. <laughs> I always wanted to just top Gary, you know? Uh, was there ever a year that you did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2016 because he didn't work. <laughs> 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 I think 2016, uh, we ended up putting up 457. Ooh, that's uh, like total. that's like Vincent b- appearances on the podcast. You know, Vincent holds the record for being on the most podcasts on this channel, right? Yeah, this guy's everywhere. Dude. I, ironically, like, I, I was I, like, I, I've interviewed and talked to so many people multiple times, and you have the fucking. I mean, that's cool, bro. But like, I didn't expect that. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't get away from Vincent, dude. He just comes, he's just all over my He comes in a great feed. package. I close my eyes while I see his Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not complaining, man. Beautiful smile, great great oh, guy. Yeah, right? um, 100%. Absolutely. Am absolutely. I only, the only flaw, and, you know, I'm probably going to get a little backlash from multiple people right now, but he's an Angel fan. It's just it's the only flaw for me. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, we don't like that? We're, uh, we, don't we're, like, we're, uh, we don't like that. <laughs> we on the other, we on, we on the five north up in there. Uh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Is that Dodgers? I don't know shit about this. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, okay, hey, you okay. know what? You're okay. very, you're very skilled in college football, which I don't know shit about. That's so. yeah. That's what I watch. <laughs> Especially when football. you did the the Mountain Berry uh, Blast tournament, man. That was oh, that was iconic. Oh, the fantasy league. Yeah, yeah. great times, dude. Was like, oh, Aaron, who who won this year? I did, not. Um, I did not. I did not. Wyatt's brother. Wyatt's brother won. Okay. And the loser had to do stand up comedy. And Nick Lindsay filmed it. And Nick Lindsay won't send it to the fucking group. He's holding oh, it hostage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a dickhead. Send the, and that means tonight before you go to bed, send the fucking video or else. <laughs> I've done that multiple times. Dude. I'm like, I'm going to break you and your girlfriend up. Whatever I need to say. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to fly back not... out and come to you in person and fuck up your life. Yeah, like, dude, I will literally put your address <laughs> on Craigslist. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, dude, what the fuck? Like, I'm going to kidnap your puppy. Looking for a like, good time? Come to this address. <laughs> yes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Fucking guy, dude. Oh, but yeah. Also, and, and those are people. AJ, I don't know if you guys are aware of the FM sliders. Those are people. Again, AJ helped cultivate first that group. Sliding of us. team. Fuck Decay Brigade. First ever sliding team. FM. You sliders. just took the words out of my fucking mouth, dude. I was about to just give them their flowers. Me and AJ are on the same page here. They originated like the. Like, like I want kind of sliding like yeah yes that was them that was them and those videos were sick and AJ's in some of them and we got cameras yeah. from all these other monsters dude those were sick ass videos and uh, yeah cool. they were the original decayed brigade they, a lot of people can trace their roots back to that yep uh, that's I'm so glad you said that I was literally gonna say that dude you took the words out of my mouth. Oh, man. Nothing against the Cape Brigade. I'm sure they're like they're absolutely fucking cool. I'm no, for like, sure. Two, but they are not the first. Not the first. <laughs> and you got to give kudos to where kudos are due. Not now, what's funny is, <laughs> what's funny is, so like, I, I this is a hill I will die on personally. Mm-hmm. But out of all the years I've gone to haunt, I, uh, like I said, since 2000, I've seen some absolutely dynamite sliders dudes like the best of the best whether it was while i was in decayed brigade or watching decayed brigade or just seeing the monsters do slideshows at haunt yeah i've seen some of the best cowboy bobby jeff star for shet steve yeah. steve o jason casey in a lot of ways like jason casey absolutely dude, abnormal but still really 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 good <laughs> freak of nature dude yeah. like that like so those guys are like goats right this is why i compare haunt to wrestling a lot you have your guys that you grew up watching and then you have the new generation that you continue watching but you're just like it ain't the same as the old guys the ones on their way out <laughs> the retirees <laughs> right there the hall of famers coming up 
yeah, one day I would love to be on that category. But uh, <laughs> I, I think this next question I, after you finish the story, I got a question that might be a, I don't know if it'll be a hard one for you, it might, but I, I got it. Okay. Brewing well, I'll quickly finish the story of uh, I basically I've seen a lot of great talent. So was AJ. So, I mean, if you're a fan of the event, you've seen some phenomenal sliders. Yeah. Uh, like someone who inspired the slide was Brendan. Like Skidda inspired me, to, like street sliding wise. The dude was doing flips and spins through crowds. Eric Saunders, great slider. I personally, this is just me. This is just me. I will die on the hill that the fact of, so the FM sliders are, are two of my best friends. Like I'm literally going to be in Evan's wedding in October. Uh, Evan and Wyatt. Just to age AJ a little bit, dude. Evan's getting married in October. Fucking nuts, right? Uh, <laughs> like, we were kids. We were, like, 16, dude. Um, but anyway, these are, like, my friend's friends. Like, they just came out to Nashville a couple weeks ago, and we partied together. Like, I will say that, in my, in my opinion, if I was a betting man, and I had to bet on who would end up, at the end of the day, being the greatest slider of all time, if Evan would have continued to work that event, and neither of them were taunt. Neither of them ended up working the event. Um, for, grave, for, right? They worked empty grave for a while, and then they just stopped scaring, and that was just it. They're just fans of the event. If Evan would have continued to like actually practice sliding and train hard, dude, that that man, I he was like 15 years yeah. old, knocking down like eight person jumps, doing butter jumps, 360 jumps, 360 into jumps, 360 jumps. <laughs> he could do anything. Fucking a. like it was absolutely insane to see these kids do the shit like yeah. back then like we were just focusing on like doing some jumps here and shit and like there were some other like like steve-o and mike that were kind of doing some, some insane shit. Shit. and then here comes these kids they're like hey that's kind of sick i'm gonna do it yeah and go and fucking do it I'm like what the fuck <laughs> I, I i will always say dude, evan would be and what evan had going for him was evan was a phenomenal baseball player and when you're in a phenomenal baseball player uh if, if you, you, you practice stealing and rounding the bases, which means to go from base A to base B, you have to have a certain level of get up and go burst. Yeah. And when it comes to sliding, you're only out like, like 40, 50 feet of a takeoff space. Yeah. So if you have that quick reaction and that quick step to get speed quick, that's going to make you a good jumper and a good slider. And Evan had that. And uh, yeah, if he would have stayed going with it, man, I have no doubt that he might have ended up being on the boats as one of the greatest of all time. Maybe he'll just pull I a fast think. one on you at his wedding, just pull out the pads and do it one last time. <laughs> he got he. I don't think he even owns him anymore, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've been warming up again just so I could do this Here, one. Here's thing in what our I wedding. will say: He promised me at some point when we're all like 42 and hopefully married and kids or whatever, we, me, him, Wyatt, our buddy Matt, Nick, we'll all go back for one more year of haunt. At, like, well, I'll go do, do it, go stop for one year, and we're like 52 and can't move <laughs> just to watch these new kids and how the events developed and just be these elder statesmen with all these amazing new people. <laughs> uh, so we'll do it one more year, but that's the end of my story. Sorry to interrupt you, Anthony. No, you're good. I'm, I'm vibing, man. I, I think this whole podcast, this whole podcast is going to be titled A Trip Down Memory Lane. <laughs> what was your question that you thought was going to be difficult? Your Mount Rushmore of haunt people. Uh, Ooh. How many? How many? How many do I get? Four. Four. Ooh. Did we answer this question, Vincent? Ask. Did you guys? And mind ask you, me? mind you. No. Now, now, going into this question, I'll make it very clear here on video. This doesn't mean that just because you guys, or if you, anyone wants to participate, in this that doesn't mean that you look at anyone like anyone's better oh, yeah, than other. You know, everyone, no, everyone's sure. talented in their own ways. It's it's the people that you grew up and and that inspired you and that made you want to come out and do this. That would be your Mount Rushmore. That's tough. Uh, I would like to hear your guys's first before I. <laughs> yeah, Vincent, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, I'll be honest. It's hard. It's a little harder for me just because I wasn't. I don't think that I have the same like exposure to haunt that you guys did. Like when I came as a guest, I went to go see the mazes. I would never really hung around like the street zones and and whatnot. Gotcha. So I like I don't know names. The one name that I do know, I remember Skidda, and I only remember Skidda because I remember like coming as a guest, and it was before like the whole opening ceremony thing. It was when you guys could go walk into the crowd, like before before rope drop, right? Oh, and I just remember Skidda just like un annihilating this girl, it just and just like it was amazing. So I like I remember seeing that, and like, all right, that's what I want to do. I did a lot from him, dude. That that's a there was a uh, sidetrack. 
uh, my first my first ever time to to scary farm it was 2009 and like i i think i was how old was i i was 12 years old and i was like i was terrified because like growing up i was like oh dude scary farm scary blah 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 right first thing that we do when we we walk in there we walk in there and i'm like all right like i'm a little on edge so uh my it was me and my dad so my dad was like oh let's go on ghost rider like relax you a little so we go down ghost rider and we're walking through through the line and i don't know who it was but some ghoul, some, some, someone in ghost town is like running through the line, scaring and just goes tickle, tickle. <laughs> and it just like keeps moving on his way. And so I, I was just like, all right, that, that was cool. That was awesome. Like I, that like put my mind at ease, but I guess in terms of like Mount Rushmore, I, Skiddo's up there. Um, shoot. I don't know. Cause like, I distinctly remember like, it was Ghost Town and the Clown and like Carnival. Like those were the, those were my top two. While you're thinking, did have you ever heard of Morbid's story of throwing the body off the top of Ghost Rider? No. <laughs> there was a year where Morbid took a full human torso from the props department and went to the top level of Ghost Rider line and threw it off the top, <laughs> and went. And he would scream out like, "It's not worth it!" and fucking throw it off. <laughs> And drag it back. He might have done it a couple times. Ask him about that when you see him. Ask him about that. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Ask him about that shit, dude. That happened. That legit happened. Oh man, I could see so many problems with that today. <laughs> oh, me too. But how, it was so. Sick, oh, it was. Uh, he's oh had some god. bangers since then, Aaron. He's got some pretty good fucking. Oh, I have no doubt that man might be the most underrated and oh, overlooked god. monster ever. Oh. That guy's incredible. He's really, really fucking good. Um, I think I, I have it. I think I have my Mount Rushmore. All right, all right. You go, and let me still think. I'll tell you this right now. I don't have one. I was gonna say Anthony, and you need to yeah. pick one too. Yeah, you gotta you gotta come up with four. Oh fuck. I'm gonna go with Vulgar, mm. Mark Manguia. Absolute madman. Give him a microphone. You'll have an HR issue. Yeah. Um, same. Greg Shoop. Slimer. Yep. Same thing, yep. just on copy paste. <laughs> um, guy, man. Fucking. I'm gonna go with Jill for mm. one specific reason. Because I remember as a guest going in, I saw her, um, coming out from like Fog Alley, like near closer towards the um the the windmill and she's kind of doing her like doll thing her little fucking like sway and i'm like all right cool and i look down on my phone i was waiting for my friends to see you know where they're going to be at. i think we're gonna go to 13 acts or something and i hear mm-hmm. and i look up and she's right fucking here i'm like fuck like, <laughs> holy shit so jill got the and i think jill scared me like genuinely the first fucking time i went as a guest like alone without any family um so yeah, jill, great character dude absolute absolute unit of a character like an iconic too in doll factory like an iconic role for her he created a whole like scaring like method that other other women took and like either made it their own or just kind of like took it to you know get comfortable as a as a monster and that was really really rad Mm -hmm. to see so uh mark shoopy jill and solid list you got a good roster so far so far, so good. I'm trying to remember who I was going to pick for my fourth one. Pick yourself. Fuck it, me. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah. me. I mean, the mentality should be you go out there and be the best every night, right? So I'm going to chisel myself up there. I'm going to make sure. I... And you have the hardware to prove it. So Yeah, that's true. Hold on. I, actually yeah, I, think, I think, Aaron, I already know. I, I know one of them who's going to be on your list regardless. Right oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and I think he's going to be on my there list, too. There it is. There it is. There it is. That's the mountaintop award, dude. Was that you, 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 was that nineteen or what year was that? Nineteen. And I'm a I'm I'm a firm believer in an alternate universe theory that if I hadn't won, 2020 wouldn't have been how it was. So I'm sorry. <laughs> you were the reason. I was the <laughs> reason. Sorry. Hey, no. well, you you have the award to sit. For, you you have a firm seat yeah. on on the on the on the summit of the mountain, and you I'm can overlook there. forever. Spaz um, was there, and like I remember. When they, I saw the first two people I saw, the first thing I saw was my face. And then I heard this uproar and which was like the coolest fucking thing. Like, I get, like this is how Stone Cold must feel when he fucking enters <laughs> a ring. Um, I get a face full of Lucio uh, because he's like walking the thing. He's a little, a couple sheets to the wind by, by this yeah, point. At the night, sure. and turns and just jumps over and jumps on me. I'm like, fuck. And then, 
he gets off me and I just hear, yeah, and like, there's spaz. I'm like, holy shit. And it was such a trip. If, if you have the means, I highly recommend winning Monster of the Year. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Easier said than done, my friend. All right. yeah. I have my, I have my, my, my mouth. Especially a ghost sound, dude, because ghost sounds like the OG, dude. Ghost sounds the, the tippity clown. Started as a clown and I'm here. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, here. What do you got, Vincent? I got Skidda, Cliff. Mm. Fuck! God, that's a good fucking good. That's a good one. I'm going to go with Glow. That's a good one, too. Okay. AJ, AJ, you got two bar- you got two heavy hitter barkers on your list already that's though. Sweet. You know, like you got I'm thinking about this like I'm drafting a team. <laughs> <laughs> it's whatever you think is best. <laughs> what are you guys looking at? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw myself up there just because I not? love it. I love it, dude. Energy. If you're not going out there to be the best every night, then why are you going out there? You know? That's a good point. It's a very good point. All right, Anthony, you're first. <laughs> you want me? Okay. You are a guest, so that, that makes sense why you would go last. Okay. Um, so, ba- basing off my, you know, uh, you got to imagine, like, I'm starting. I didn't know a lot of old guys coming in. So, like, me, I'm learning. I know two of yours off the bat. You Just basing it off of what Yeah, I'm basing it off of personal experiences that I've seen since I've really dug deep into this community. Yeah, tell us about it. Um... <laughs> Get that tattooed on you, dude. <laughs> I might. Tell us about it. Uh... Just, just right there. Just, uh... All right. <laughs> you on the top of a mountain. So I'm going to go <laughs> a D- Dieterman because of knowledge. Mm, that's I've a learned, good one. I've, I've learned so much from him, and he's, and he's introduced me and <sighs> showed me to so much things that he goes up there. And I've actually seen him slide in that motherfucker for if only his, you could have seen him in his prime, in dude, his pri- with, with Wade I the know, Goblin, dude. I, I know, like, but, like, even today, I'm like, dude, you look like you haven't fucking lost a touch. Oh, yeah, sure. Like, I'm, I was watching him slide the other day, or, like, a couple like a couple months ago, and I was like, what the fuck is... You're, like, 50, bro! You're still doing... You're little, fucking a legend! A little itty-bitty Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. The pe- <laughs> we call him the, the Pebble. Oh, my God. It's I've never pebble. put that together until just now. He, yes. he ain't the rock. He's the Pebble. He is the Pebble. He is the Pebble. That's amazing. Um, I'm gonna so he's on there. Me. I'm going to put I'm gonna put Spaz, it up, dude. I'm gonna put Spaz on there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gotten to see him perform with Decade and stuff, but nothing. I've You know, I've gotten to see him, I think, one year at Knott's, but he's – everything that I've seen from him is – 2012 was his mm. – I think 2012 was his monster of the year year. I was there that year too. When did when did Paul win it? Nah, that might have been Paul. 2011 or 12. You you right. That might have been Paul in 2012. 2013 might have been Gary's monster of the year. I don't fucking know. Fuck. I feel bad now. One of those two years he won monster of the year. And then my third would probably be one of my good friends, Trix the Trickster. What she's That's doing. Six slides? Six Flags now transitioned into uh, Universal Studios. Horn oh, cool. Horn she does uh, did stilts there, right? She did sh- ev- ev- just about every stilt spot you can think about. She did her so, and, uh, the her Big and Crow, like everything. Like she did it. All. Yeah, her and her and, and and Blaze. I only put her on that list because, and don't get me wrong, I've seen so many talented female people out there. It actually makes me happy that women are getting out there and, and fucking doing mm-hmm. this. This is great. New sliding. You know, we got a lot of new sliders coming up. This is awesome. Yeah. I love it. But something about her is just, you know, I, I see how much she does outside of those two months beyond, you know, the the, the show. Well, she she commits into character year round. Uh, she grinds it out and, and, you know, she's getting really well known now. Um, and so I just respect her work ethic. Her work ethic mm. is is second to none. Um, Sick. So Tricks the Trickster is number three. And we know who's number four. Who do you think is number four? I, well, I think it's Lucio. No. Oh, okay. You're well, like, ah, dude, what? This is why I don't win fantasy leads, because I draft <laughs> like shit. No. Um, I would say number four would have to go to Glow. Uh, mm. the, don't get me wrong, OG bride, terrifying. I know you're terrified. Yeah. I know you're, He's I know you got some PTSD of, them, of, of your bride days. Um, but Jeez. I'll never be married. I, was <laughs> that's why I'll never be married. Even though you were just <laughs> talking about, unfortunately we're 42 and we have kids. And no, I'm, j- I'm joking. I'm joking. 
I'm just afraid she'll show up for some fucking reason. We'll she's say her name like, so many times. And right. It's going to be the nightmare before the wedding. She's just going to fucking have a nightmare. You Aaron, right around. The Hello. Gene, 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 Gene. No. <laughs> the lights in the church will go off and it'll be her with a candle. And be yeah. Beautiful. And then it, like the candle goes out and like as it goes up, just little by little, it's getting closer and closer. Yeah. No, no that's like, terrifying. Hard terrifying. Hard <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I've only ever seen Glow's um, uh, adaptation of The Bride in person. Um, I've seen Jean's on on film and 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 you know some little footage that they have of her, uh, and she's incredible. What she did with that character yeah. is is just you know you can't even compare the two because they they and we've I know we've all talked about this many times. They do their own thing. They're their own a- adaptations of the bride. You know you can't even you know one was like really really vocal. One is kind of more creepy, stocky. Oh, yes. You know, um, yeah. So I mean, they both do a fucking kick-ass job of what they did and bring to the table. Uh, but I've I've watched uh, Glow now for a couple years doing her job, and and she is just terrific at it. Uh, the the reactions she gets from guests are second to none. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you know, just when you when you see that candle in the fog, you know something is behind that candle lurking, and you know it's not good. But I think that's what makes that creepiness of, you know, uh. Of just Ghost Town keeping that alive, along with a lot of other people. I mean, uh, it's really hard to come up with the Mount Rushmore because I can name a lot of people. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? I can name yeah. a lot oh, of people. Absolutely. It's not you meant know? to be an easy question. For limited not... or is criminal, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> it is very criminal. Like, I would easily, honestly, I'm not even lying. I'd throw you guys up on there too if I could. Um, oh, because each one of you, I mean, what you've done with the mailman character, fucking amazing i mean that's so sick that is something with me as a haunt fan who loves to interact with things that is the peak of interaction right there not only are you interacting with me but you're handing me a letter to kind of continue that story even after i leave and they're all handmade they're all handmade that's great Um, so so, yeah sorry you know it's you know like that smells really nice no it's great yeah all burnt yeah 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 it's funny because like I've had people tell me, be like, how do you, how did you get it to smell like fog? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm glad it, I walk like it. around fog all I night. Walk, it, <laughs> yeah. It's in a bag for eight hours a night, <laughs> multiple nights. If it, if it's been in there for a while. So it's just a little extra, extra something, you, you know, know, to take home. It's, you're probably honestly getting some, like some monster musk on there. Yeah. You're getting some, you're getting some funky smells. Yeah. For sure. No, but I, 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 you know, it, just, it adds to the authenticity. I, you know, right. when, when I saw Vincent as the mailman, I, I saw him, you know, in 2019, too, as just kind of like, as he says, he was just there as a vibe. I was just there. I was vibing. Yeah, he was vibing. And, you know, I got that's when I first met Vincent. And that was, you know, just to watch him do that. But then to see him, you know, uh, his evolution go from that to where think, he's at I, now. Aside from from my girlfriend, you're the only one that has seen like the true like from the before to like the thought process of like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. To like that was like 2019 when he told me, and I had to keep my mouth shut. Like, it's like it's like signing an NDA. <laughs> I felt like I was working for Marvel at that fucking point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you uh, the only thing missing from that character for you is just a fucking horse, but that's just impossible. So <laughs> you know, you know, uh, yeah, a- horse character. yeah that's we did, true. We did. We, we, we did. Um, Jump on her back. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little hefty. We might have to put the horse down after. <laughs> Um, AJ, the only time I've ever seen you scare was with Judas, and uh, I, I thought what you've done with that character is is phenomenal. And then when you told me the backstory of the character, I mean, the award says it all right there. And that was the His year- Cannonball character guy was awesome, dude. <laughs> Fucking legit. <laughs> Super oh, sick. Oh, man. I mean, it, it was just cool to, like, you know, going into this and, and how welcoming you guys were, especially when we would show up every weekend and you would see us every weekend and eventually start talking to us and... You know, and, and it's, you know, things just went from there. Relationships started from there, and you know, podcast here, podcast there, and sooner or later, now we're sh- co-hosting season three of Shoot the Shit together. So, I mean, what you've done with Judas and and everything is awesome. Um, I got to see you, I got to see you kill a werewolf, and that was I will never forget that because you know it's like just watching a fucking real life horror movie in person. So I was like, that was fucking cool. Um, and then Aaron, there's Aaron. There, and then what, what what's to say about Aaron? I mean, he, you know, when I was first introduced to you, the stories that I heard, where I was like, "This can't be. This is bullshit, right? This guy's just fucking hyping himself up, right?" <laughs> and then, um, 
multiple sources were like, no, that's fucking real. Like everything he says, no, it's it it happened. I was like, okay, I I, I now I really want to see it. And uh, twenty twenty one, I got that opportunity to see it. Um, it was very brief, but I did get to see how you were out in the field, and it was awesome. It was cool. I'll never forget it. Um, and then to hear your stories as um, also Maze Manager, that was that was really cool to hear a lot of. And we heard a lot today. Uh, some stuff I've never even heard. So that you know, every time Trying I do it, some- yeah, every time that's that's the ongoing thing we got with Aaron is every time he shows up on the podcast, there's always something new I learn about him because the guy's got so much stories that I don't. I think we could do more a podcast a year, and he will never run out of shit. I appreciate it, man. Thank I you. wish you could. I wish. I wish. Uh, I wish Vincent was there. And AJ, too, like those 2015, 14, 15, 16 years on Ghost Town were just fucking nuts. Yeah. And those were years where pass holders could come, man. You could have sat there and seen some shit that would have <laughs> blow, like, blown your socks off, man. Yeah. Those are like, those are my favorite years. But thank you for saying so. I want to say something about AJ, too, um, that maybe has has or has not been said to you. But, uh, be, I mean, being a, being a good friend of of uh temo he'll self-admit that his his barber role was like very insignificant you, the things you're doing with that are like far and beyond um cutting out people's tongues everything that's awesome and I, I i've seen some clips of it he was he looked way cooler than i did um that's for sure i thought well, there's a reason he switched characters he was like this isn't inspiring to me i'm just kind of standing here i'm not really but you're doing something completely different with it and he'll admit it and i'm speaking for him on this just oh because I feel like I have a little right to do so by being his friend, but I uh, no, you are. Yeah. You're, you're the things you're doing with that character are, are very unique. And, and uh, sometimes you'll have someone fill a role and it's kind of like the same thing. Part two. Yeah. But I uh, certainly not, not in your case there. And then Vincent, Absolutely. obviously your character is completely original. That means, that means a lot. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Dude. Yeah. Absolutely. I only give props when they're genuine and deserved. So. All right, uh, Aaron, your Mount Rushmore. Uh, my there Mount Rushmore. It's tough because off top of my head, I want to say Wyatt Vine Lucio because those are my guys. Um, And they could very well be on that list for me just because I see the best out of them every night. Um, And I've seen them do shit and they're down. Like they're fucking down for everything. (laughs) Like I come up with an idea and they're like, all right. (laughs) Um, And they're cool and they're inspiring because they very much like they, they understand that I have a little bit of an OCD complex when it comes to like what I want to do at knots. And they just, they just ride with me. Like if I want to make a theme for that year, whether it be the last dance or royalty or whatever it was, they were just like, cool, we're bought in. Like we're, we'll buy into the vision and we'll all be in this together and we'll have a good time. And those are my true friends, but I'm not going to include them on the list. I just <laughs> want to say that. My list st- starts, absolutely starts with Spaz. He is, he is everything I think a monster is and more. He's taught me everything I know. I I owe my complete haunt career to Gary. He is to me. He is the monster. He is the guy. Yep. Um, my second would probably be someone that I saw a lot of myself in when I was coming to the event. Someone I wanted to be who was young, who had the energy, who was absolutely picture perfect with the slides and stairs, and that would be Sir Biscuit out of camp. Uh, Sir Biscuit to me was like. Okay. I want to be this. Like he was staring with Gary, and those were Gary's jester years when he was fucking nuts. Him, Gary, and Merrill would get together and do the hat trick. Ferret would get together and do the hat trick, and they would be unstoppable. And I'm like, I want to be with them. <laughs> Luckily, I got to do that with Gary. But yeah. yeah, Mike. Mike is a great person. Mike like works at Sea World, like in Dubai now. He moves. <laughs> He works with like the aquatic I didn't even life. know they had a fucking Sea World in Dubai. Yeah, they they opened it and moved him out there to like train the Sea Life instructor people. Wow, good for him. And he's just a great dude. He was on Decay Brigade for a year, and me, him, and Gary got together and just exchanged stories. He's just such a good guy, and he's been at banquets before. And me and him will just sit there and just geek out on what could have been if we ever had a chance to roll together. And amazing guy. Uh, number three for me would also be Skitta. Again. Huge inspiration, probably who I model my scaring after the most in terms of physicality. Like I, I model Gary in terms of chaos and and energy, but I model Spat or uh, uh, Skidda in terms of fucking the weird shit. Yeah, clapping and scaring and standing over people and being fucking weirdo. Um, plus the guy's smart as shit. Like he moved to like Santa Barbara to be like a biologist and fucking. He's actually like 
really smart out of everyone that's worked at Han. <laughs> yeah. has a good career. Well, Gary, <laughs> right? Gary is a rocket scientist. Yeah, Gary like creates <laughs> fucking satellites for Raytheon and shit. Like, wow. Um, you know, it's important when I asked him one day what he does, he's like, I can't talk about this project. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that means there's a lot of zeros on your paycheck, probably. Yeah. I signed an NDA. Right. Uh, I got it. Yeah, I got to give it to Brendan. Also, Brendan was the first person I ever slid, slid with. Before I started going to the practices with AJ and all them, the first one I ever went to was at the rink with Angie and Skidda and Wyatt. And my first ever slide, I ate shit right in front of Skidda. And this was like my guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But great dude, he's he gave me a lot of what I wear on my costume, a lot of that scare cloth and all that shit he gave to me. Like that's from him. Uh, again, another guy I would love to have scared with, and we've sat there and re- reminisced on ma- imaginary situations that never happened, or we could have scared together. And then number four on my list, um, God, it's always the fourth one. It's- yeah, because I have I have a couple. I have a couple of clowns that I easily want to put on that list. Um, we'll start off with honorable mentions and then go with the, the that's final. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> honorable mentions, Panhead. Honorable mention, Big John. Two monsters that I saw do shit, especially with chainsaws that I've never seen at any other event. Uh, I remember watching Panhead climb underneath the railing where that barbecue hot dog stand used to be, where the yeah, it's like a it's like a restaurant now or it's some shit. Now. Yeah. People would stand in line in that, and he would crawl under the rebar with his chainsaw going, like, pulling himself under chasing people, dude. Like, the guy was nuts. Yeah, and then absolutely big, insane. Big John's, like, seven foot whatever, man, screaming at people, sliding with it, like, insane. That um, guy going for a slide was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. Dude, he's nuts. sliding, and on his knees, he was probably tall as the person he was trying to scare. He, yeah. Some, like, he would... To hit the slide and all the leaves that fell from the trees by the fountain would come up in this really rad anime like yeah. funnel around him that he'd just get up uh fuck, honorable mention to ferret is a big one for me um and then of course the regulators as a whole now and i would say myself honorable mention i haven't won monster of the year so i i don't want to quite put myself there i'm glad yeah, vincent did that uh <laughs> i i think i could be on that list but I'm gonna re- I'm gonna give it a tie. I'll say me slash uh, uh, Angie. Um, I think the things Angie did as the nun character are insane, and the things that she brought to it and her uniqueness was something that I've I haven't seen in a character since. Mm-hmm. And um, she went out on top the way she wanted to do it. She's always been. She's still one of my extremely good friends. Uh, had the opportunity to go to her wedding and stuff. Like she's an awesome person and furthermore a phenomenal monster who i learned a lot from i think um, yeah that's a good that's a great pick angie yeah angie's and i mean you could you could put the names of multiple women in a washing machine and pick anyone out and they're going to be good uh like yes. you said jill yeah ferret uh angie uh jessica like there's so many people but yeah i would say me slash i'll share that i'll share that spot with uh with Angie, because she's, I mean, One, I had the chance to scare with her, and she was incredible. We couldn't scare her together. She was way better than me and did shit that I can't do, and I would just trip over her. But, <laughs> but yeah, that, that would be my – that's Rushmore. my Rushmore. That's oh, a good question. That is a good question. I should start asking that question more. To you got to come up with some sort of draft board where it's like you can pick two oh. non-sliders, three sliders, oh, dude. Oh, two like, from Ghost like, Town, two from Sia, like – I'm I'm behind this. Current former, and we have to have this set up so we dude. can live. Yeah, I've been trying. You know what I've been trying to do town. for years is to fucking set up a game of Haunt Jeopardy. Oh, dude, I would love to play that. Yeah, that'd be fucking oh, cool. Yeah, that would be fucking fun. Um, I would love to play. Just that consult shit. with a bunch of people. Get like trivia from like the old school era, from like that era, from like this era. That you know what I mean. Just get all things of eras. That way, everything nice. is fucking. Real quick, have we been recording? Yeah, we have. Okay. I'm, I'm recording on OBS. <laughs> okay, cool. Because it says finished on mine. I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we were talking for 45 minutes, and you now <laughs> fucking realize that we stopped recording in this app. Just nobody out. else did, or nobody said anything. <laughs> just oh, making sure, okay? Hey, I appreciate yeah, you. I appreciate I, you. I do have to go in like four minutes. This microphone appreciates oh, you, too. 
You're chill. Is there anything for the 50th that you guys want to see happen? Um, Me retire. Also, uh, <laughs> what? I want to see you retire. Me retire. Oh, is this it for you? Or are you, are you, are you hanging it up after the 50th? This is it. Uh, I know the real test is going to be next year when I get the email, but this is, I'm, I've yeah. been talking myself into a hole and saying, yep, the 50th is my last year. So when I do, if I do come back for the 51st, I'll look like an asshole. Uh, <laughs> So I'll be the first to give you shit about it too. But this is, it's just the way it's feeling from like a, an employee standpoint, from a fan standpoint, it's drifting into a direction. I, I feel like I'm not, I don't want to be a part of anymore. Like it's, sure. I had my fun. Um, I want to see these kids have fun now. And I also want to save myself from any more injuries that I may sustain. And, and um, there's the important one right there. Yeah, just, uh, the just know. In my you, fifth year in Ghost Town, it'll be my fifteenth year all together. So I'm like, this is a great it's a good marker. If you like come that. back for the fifty first year, I'm just saying this right now. If this happens, we are going to do a segment where I fucking bring my camera. I record you. I wherever you are in Ghost Town. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Wherever you are, liar, no, 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 no. Wherever you are in Ghost Town, I'm gonna be like, follow me. We're gonna walk all the way to the graveyard. I'm like, you're supposed to be fucking done. Buddy, why are you Die back? <laughs> next time, next you know, time I, I do come back, I'll be wearing all black though. That's AJ, this is Undertaker. this is again why this is what is inspiring to me and why it's so important to uh to have Ed's monsters as cast leads is because they after the fiftieth haunt is is going to be in a very questionable situation in terms of talent. Yeah, just, it is what it is. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to be hit or miss leaders leaving. And you're going to have a lot of people who are third, fourth year monsters all of a sudden thrusted into this leadership role that these 10 plus years were occupying. And it's, it's, it's going to be an odd and interesting power dynamic there of who's want to take, who's going to take over things like the banquet and things of that nature. And not just in ghost town in general. And uh, that's why that's what inspires me to want to be a cast lead. And I'm sure you too is like, there's going to be all this new putty to play with and a lot of them are to be very receptive, but this event also needs people who really love and care about it that want to lead it behind the scenes to greatness. Yeah. And I think the two of us, between the two of us, anybody else that would want to do this, they have to have that. Yeah. That, like, Hey, I remember when I was a kid and I went, this was my first maze. I remember when they did this one, when, 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 when fucking what's, what's his fucking name. He's always in, he was always in carnival. And I was in like Vegas, uh, at, at Alonzo. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Those fucking shows. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I agree with you. I think it from here on out because there's so many. There's gonna be so many people leaving. It's gonna be a mass exodus, dude. Yeah, uh, and, and so there's well, gonna be a lot of parties, right? Didn't that happen like ten? For the up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta lead the party now, dude. It's like I'll lead the party now, man. But like, it's like <laughs> you know, and that almost kind of it doesn't worry me because I know there's a lot of really great people out there who are prepared yeah. to take roles. But like, also just being a fan of the event, it worries me a little bit because I'm like. Yeah. What if all these street zones all of a sudden have 35 new brand new rookies? It's like you gotta get your sea leads under you quick. That's how it's been the last what two two or three years. Well, um, I think my first year in Ghost Town, so 2019, there was 30 brand new rookies. I think this past uh, 2021, there was like at least, at least 20. Well, maybe there will be a lot more then, but that in any case, there's going to be a lot of new, yeah, a lot of new people out there, man, and. I definitely implore any any people, anyone listening, that's like a third, fourth year monster in a street zone, especially like you, 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 you're going to all of a sudden be in a very important role. So yeah. use it effectively and don't. No, this you know, podcast. Don't yeah, the no, opportunity. No one listens to this podcast. Oh, you got the most listened to hot podcast. Not even um, we. We don't even listen to this podcast. <laughs> also, I would just like to raise an opinion here, and this might be a controversial opinion, and I'm not down talking this this maze at all. But was anyone else kind of shot the trick or treat won the fucking uh well, I was I, so great base trick or treat is you talking about the knots uh bracket yes. I was thinking yes. about starting my own bracket cuz I was like I'm not too Start your own Yeah go AJ All right is that what you're doing uh, Guys Aaron I, it was dude talking to you dude Absolutely you as well man I'm I'm glad you're doing well you look happy you look healthy I'm happy for you man you, um, well. you continue you head towards that degree you get you get it bud <laughs> Thank you, man. I we will we will cross paths again when we are both in management. For sure, then it'll be then it'll be really on. That, I, 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 I love that. That's what I want to hear. All right, guys. Well, um, you guys continue. I gotta go. Love y'all. Have Thank a good you, night. AJ.